A VPN, short for Virtual Private Network, is a cybersecurity tool for privacy and security. NordVPN ensures that you can browse safely and privately in just a few clicks. Yes, we're coming with Kieran McGinn! Yes, Bill! Stephen McGinn! The worst McGinn of the three! <laughs> How are you, mate? All right? Good, mate. Uh, best looking dog? Best looking, absolutely. <laughs> so, uh, uh, not, not much competition, to be honest. No, no, no. Would you say that? Would you go down as. No, I can't slag him. <laughs> if you had to rate you as one, two, three, what would it be? Sisters of Darling, by the way. Aye. Sisters of Darling. You can't put a sister in with a three there. No, no, no. Katie, me. Paulson said the teeth, John. <laughs> 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 what, what dentist was brave enough to do his teeth? It's been some job, honestly. Him and my mum and aunties have all went since. Oh, have they, right? Yeah. Ten man job, wasn't it, today, Paul McGinn's teeth? He's looking well now, but, isn't he? Is he, huh? Aye, he's good Paul's set, got yeah. a bit. Paul has got a bit. Aye, he's not a bad He's the best part. He's got the best part, yeah. definitely. Have you, do you get on with him? Aye, no, he is. He's good. It's good dish him. I don't want to get into the boring sports scene answer, but it's a good dish. Uh -huh. uh, your dad must have the best ball sacking world football man <laughs> he's having the best life ever at the minute we said this he's just in, since he retired plays oh. golf Monday to Friday and then goes to football at the weekends goes on every Scotland trip wow no it's insane Fri nice. Friday That's Friday all day in London before Chelsea uh, last week so he's just going and doing watching John and I wasn't playing at Alawa so didn't need to go to Alawa <laughs> oh it's tremendous so wait, isn't it is, 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 like, if you did not want to say it's fine but is John just like paid their every enough for him and just go and enjoy your life no, I mean, they worked hard. Mum and dad are teachers. Lazy bastard, mate. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, he's. I mean, my mum doesn't like travelling all the time and that, so. My she dad's a wee cell. Cell. I wonder what he's up to doing there. I've got a few McGinn's in there, like my sister. So, right, the problem begins one to eight. Your dad's up to My sister goes with him quite a lot. She goes to Scotland trips. So, and then a couple of these old pals with you, and they go on all the Scotland trips. So. But see how he has produced three football players? Like, was he, did he play? Ah, yeah, well, he played at Stirling Uni, he played at a decent enough level, but never senior. Uh, everyone else says he's a good player, but um, I mean, he produced John and those two are ah. good work and hard journeymen. Where does it? Does everyone's dad say they were good when they were younger? No, my dad was terrible. Oh, I mean, my dad, dad kids five on his class. Fucking hopeless, man. <laughs> my, dad, my dad said he was good. But fuck knows, I've never heard anybody else say he was good. And then we uh, speak to your dad's pals in the pub. Your dad was some player, uh, man. Uh, your dad was some fighter. <laughs> <laughs> was that my man fucking. I know. Hit, flings him about every night, man. It's like Cam Dooney played with Hamney Row for six years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who does John get his ass for? Your dad has got some arse on him, isn't he? <laughs> no, I don't know. Monko uh, had uh, a. great arse. Your uncle's got a great arse. <laughs> <Monko, like, laughs> no, Monko, he plays quite like Monko. Monko had the, the big arse, the left foot, and that, so. Uh, obviously John's just a much better version He's got the best arse in world football, isn't he John? So John could be your uncle's? See the thing is, if you watch any Villa, he actually doesn't use it as much as he did Like Emery's kind of said no Stop using your ass! <laughs> no, people have said it, but he has, I mean, it's quite a lot of chess with Emery And he doesn't, he doesn't invite contact anymore He says, look, I need you for 60, 65 games a season Don't invite contact when you don't need to play sharp, so That's mad, isn't it? No. We've got big news one of our favourite sponsors is back this week. One of the best sponsors I've seen. Nord oh. VPN. Wow, honestly, what a team. Now, we're not just saying this, but it's all been very active online. Nord VPN really is software that we could all be doing with having, Kev. Aye, Nord VPN believes that internet should be free from online threats, censorship, and surveillance. So, not only does Nord VPN make you safer online, Stephen, with one click by protecting you from malware with threat protection, it's also the fastest VPN on the planet, mate. But here, is the exciting part. Go for it, Andrew. If you sign up to NordVPN's two-year plan, where you'll receive four months free at nordvpn.com forward slash opengoalvpn, you can change your location on the app and watch content from around the world. That means you could watch football in the likes of America, Asia, and other parts of Europe that you usually wouldn't have access to here by changing location on the NordVPN app. It also works if you go abroad, so if you were away at the weekend there, there would be no need to miss any of the FA Cup or SPFL games if you just switch your location to the UK. How does that sound, lads? Sounds absolutely fantastic, Amazing, Simon. Mate. Best in the business, best in the business. Absolutely. Get the NordVPN two-year plan plus four months free when you go to nordvpn.com forward slash Open Goal VPN. It's risk free with Nord's 30 day money back guarantee. Click the link nordvpn.com forward slash Open Goal VPN, which you can find in the description box below. I'm off a drink, ask me now. No, you're Month, not. I swear, February, no touching it. But did you drink at the weekend? Right? I had drank the weekend there too much, no. and then that's me done now. Right, we'll speak it's to you next month. I'm going to keep you updated every week. I'll let you know how I'm feeling. I've Why are you doing that? Just feel like a fucking JK, mate. Get through the first, I honestly get through the first two weeks, mate, of flying, or a month. Mm -hmm. Flying. It's only when you said that, I actually thought back, 
I've no no had a drink for more than ten days since. Couldn't even tell you when. Mate. Before COVID, probably. Uh -huh. Before COVID, uh -huh. that's bad. Mate. That's bad, isn't it? That's not good. So, try to be in good shape. Uh -huh. That's what I mean to me. I did, I should be in unreal shape. Mate. I do ten k every day, but I'm still a wee bit heavy because I fucking drink every night. <laughs> that cricket jumper's getting big. Uh, well, why well, don't I ask Andy to rate out of ten? I know. <laughs> Oh, Wait, I'll, I'll stand up here and I'm doing it though. Right, come on, Andy. Get off my couch. Get off my couch. <laughs> Mate, go I'm sitting in the, and our goalie coach writes, oh yeah, fuck it, look at her or something. I'm like, who's he stuck in? It's you and Jilly on the... Did he? Have to have it. Xander, you mad creep. Somebody, somebody sent me, right, and I'm like, I didn't realise hey, Andy's message had TikTok, so I was watching it, I was like, you were the star of the show, but mate, was it? Percent. Uh, you're good Jilly. on it. Uh, uh, uh. Jilly, you can I'm tell he's sitting there with a the pure horn, isn't it? Uh, as soon as the video's done, the clothes are getting ripped off. I can't believe you're there. I can't believe you're there. I can't believe you're there for so long. I know, mate. What, does she just come and say to you, can you do this for us? Uh, if somebody's asked, like, they'll say, can you do it with your, your fiancé or whatever? And then she gets paid for it, so she says, like, see if she's getting paid, I can't say no, do you know what I mean? I feel bad. Uh -huh. But I love that, I could not hate it, I'm mad doing it. <laughs> <laughs> right, so right, Hiz, what would you give that? Uh, you go, you're going to no, no bad, Biggie, aye. No so bad. It's like, what? Uh, 7.8. I, I, I've said this about the big man before, I, I think the big man does alright, but we get caned for wearing oversized, I'd love to see the big man in a bit of... And a bit oh, of baggy. Just a wee bit of baggy oversized. Size. My size. No, could you get baggy on that? Like, you get baggy on that body. Four XL for the oversized. No one XL remains to go, aye. What about... Again, I think it's a football that, player that, look, That's a McGinn trend. <laughs> is it a yeah, I bet a comfortable man, but... But the difference is, Paul's has always got certain stains over the front, innit? Aye, uh, <laughs> see, before, mate, I'm, but I was... So what are you doing that out of 10, stains? mate? I didn't early start the day. Seven and a half. Aye, ah, yeah, so that uh, was seven, yeah. three, and that's seven and a half. That's seven, eight. Oh, seven, eight. eight. He likes a point eight. Jilly asked him that, why is that a point eight? And that's a point seven. Favourite number, mate. Is that what it is, aye? Number eight. What about? Eh, uh, I'll give you an 8.2, mate, I look well. So I'm the worst? He's the worst, 7.7. <laughs> 7. Oh, sorry, 7.8, right. He's right, mate. This is all H&M, mate. I know, I was going to say, you look like one of these summer models. The one of the what, sorry, mate? The summer models. I, do, oh, I really want the Tash face well. to go, though. Do you? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. The Tash McKinley, you want it gone? It's gone, it needs to go. Palmer's copied, isn't he? Oh, Palmer. No, Palmer that. watches the podcast. <laughs> he starts scoring penalties, you wee prick. He's with your right foot for 12 yards, though. I'm going to get rid of it, I'm going to grow my hair. And get rid of the facial hair. What's the what's the hair look good? Don't know yet. I don't know if you anybody got any suggestions for what I can I'm do. A, I was in the <laughs> <laughs> I was in no, the I need to get a box of fire, what's to get to like that, mate? <laughs> just a pair. Just a pair. <laughs> I was in that uh, I was in for the the hair transplant consultation on the Oh so you were? Where's your specs, you specky bastard? Uh, get a bin. Get them on, get, get them on. on. Come on, you specky bastard, get them on. Them, uh, tenth uh, tenth of April I'm in. Fucking for the shift. <laughs> 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 Mate, you genuinely look like Winston Ingram in it. <laughs> what is that? Get him back up, get him back up. Do not I give it a peer see. pressure. Do I not give it a peer pressure. What do you mean? Can you see? That's why you will. They're for reading. <laughs> Come <laughs> oh, so on, get the Gregory's on there. I'll shoot you. Nah, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> They're straight out of the role play closet, isn't they? He's getting Austin Pillar. That's his role play closet. Austin Pillar. I only brought them in for it because I thought we'd hear a laugh about them. I think you shouldn't, mate. Nah, it seems like. Nah, you do, mate. Nah, fucking. Do you know what you need with glasses? A wee bit of facial hair. Grow the beard. Nah, I had a ginger beard. I've got a ginger beard. I can't grow hair. Nah. Why? Did your pubes fall out? Aye, mine's day. Did I? Aye. I'm talking about my hair. <laughs> no, my hair no, but I'm a serious <laughs> See if I wake up, John. See if I wake up in the morning, mate. What, you've got hairs on your pillow? I'm saying a dozen hairs on my pillow, easy. Aye. Just no, no, st just no strong. That's why I can't. I've got a strong hair. That's why I can't strong I don't care. I'm going bald, right? And I've never found a hair. I don't know where the fuck they're going. Is that how weird? Like, I'm, I'm going bald, bald, right? And I don't know <laughs> where the hairs are. Monday afternoon, I don't know mate. where they are. All oh, right, so you're you're actually you kind of see where your hair I'm is. I'm fucking waking up in the morning. I'm like expecting all the showers clogged up with hair. Well, or see if you're like, in the shower, don't you? You shampoo? Do you know look at the horns? Nah, it's not here. I think there's fucking sure, something nah. going on up here. Nah, but when I'm shamp when I'm shampooing, I look at my hands. No, it's when the window opens and the 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 bathroom the blow has fucking dash off. I'll have it three four, easy. Do you? That would freak me out. Like a dog. I know, mate. Uh, that was pretty weird. Uh, food, what's your favourite? Uh, just before we get into the serious stuff, what's your favourite? Your last meal start, I mean. Does it? So tell us a lot about you as a person. What do you mean? Uh, uh, like your favourite of it? You're on death row, are you? Favourite start, meal, favourite start, meal, start, meal uh, main and favourite dessert? Mozzarella sticks. Ficoyas, to start. Decent. Not bad, <laughs> Right, would you have a wee bit? Is it chilli jam? Chilli dip. Oh, fuck. Don't mind it at all. Uh, main. Don't know what. Cheese and toast. 
Like <laughs> cheese and toast. Now. Don't know. Cheesecake, cheeseburger, probably. Do you mere cheese? Aye. <laughs> cheeseburger. <laughs> cheeseburger. <laughs> Fair where? Where have you had a good, where's your best? Like a, a spicy one with like jalapenos, buffalo sauce and that. What's your dessert? That's cheese a good board? Shout. Yeah, cheese board. Aye, <laughs> cheese board. Cheese board. Cheese board. No, a fudge cake, ice cream. Uh, yeah, no bad. Cool piece. Right. Ice cream. And then you could have one drink, what would it be? A pint of lager. What, what, what lager? What lager? Tenants, probably. Oh, good. Aye. It's a strong good meal, that. Tenants. Have you cooked anything good this week? After your Anything different After life uh, Nothing different no But you've no. done all the cooking I never cooked last Monday That was the only day She cook No because I came straight here for, for the radio I was raging mate Because you know the, radio, like, the, the podcast last week Was quite long wasn't yeah, it yeah, yeah. Didn't have time to go home and cook So I got a subway I was raging with myself Subway mate. I know oh, That's a poor thing Right what's going to do 20 minutes to get there I'm not getting a McDonald's McDonald's your next best option isn't it mm. What did you get for your subway What was your choice Chicken teriyaki Oh, no bad. Don't mind it. Wait, I'm right with my health kit you now. Uh, no, I went down to Australia on Sunday and the mother in law cooked me chicken haggis stuff. With, uh, chicken haggis was wrapped in bacon with a nice, I think it was like a creamy white wine sauce. No bad. Outstanding. Mm. Right, let's hear your fucking Here over the top bougie meal go. Fair yeah. Well, what did you have? We got to be with Dennis and Barbecue Saturday night. Yeah, we are. Dennis and Barbecue. Now, what did you have? Double, um, double cheeseburger and a side of rack of ribs. The ribs in there. Oh, we have Dennis and Barbecue. Right. On Duke Street. Usually you're some stupid <laughs> prince of lackey. Friday we got, like, Friday we got McTassos, so do you like McTassos up before? Aye. The Greek. Mate, oh, McTassos like up before. It's outrageous. Dying. Dying, it's mate. fucking magic. Really that gyros good. type thing that everyone's uh, wrapped in the one go. Aye, that's really good. Right, Steve McGinn's on, lads. Aye. Falkirk flying top league. Good, good. Nearly there, nearly there. That's no, it was me still they play Ackies twice. How many points? Uh, I think that took it back to 11. So we obviously dropped Oh, okay, it's done, man. Aye. Congratulations to Ranks will be showing this in the dressing room. It's done. <laughs> Falkirk have definitely won it. Steve McGinn says the league is over. <laughs> we, had a, we had a horrendous couple of weeks uh, with, with the manager in terms of we dropped two points at Edinburgh, which is a bad one. So uh, Hamlet made two points and then we get beat at Bonnie Rig. So obviously the manager being for Edinburgh, didn't want to, don't want to lose any of the game, but uh, I think that one hurt him and it was a long build up to, to Saturday. Tell them what you've done just to get it to your sister. You made them tell. I made them made us play an eleven v eleven with strips, different dressing rooms. <laughs> oh, did he? Yeah. Man, just did that though, didn't he? That's, That's a was an no battle. But he was a ref. He was John Robot, wasn't he? Uh, he, it was. I mean, it was good. It, 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 we sent him home happy. So it was a good standard. And was that a mix? Ah, yeah, mix. Ah, fair dues. And does he give team talks to both teams? Well, he took one team and smudge assistant. He took the other team. And what but he, he said he was going to stop it and that if it wasn't. But it was good. It was good standard. It's a good squad for for the level. Uh, so here yeah, that was him. That's his, out the system. We're going to beat Alwan. I do like McGlynn, mate. He's uh, very much attention to detail, isn't he? Aye. But Aidan Conley was telling me when you played Celtic in the cup, you went. I know you probably weren't there, but you went and trained at a pitch that was the exact same size as Celtic Park. Was that at Rafe? I, mean, I don't. At Rafe, that was. That was at Rafe, huh? And so like, if we are like we are playing on a Saturday, if they're in away game, he'll bring in the dimensions to the exact same size as. It's the pitch. And like we did it, we did it before Bonnie Rig, but I don't know if you've seen Bonnie Rig's pitch in the. Like Aye. we are bringing the pitch in to make it smaller, long throws and all that. But in Ashford tough, it's impossible to kind of recreate it. It's, yeah. real, it's quite hard to recreate it with, without bringing the body in and passing it. Uh, no, I noticed in the body rig game. See your goal. The body doesn't even bounce when it hits. Like, see after the boy headers it. Have you seen it? No. The boy headers it, but it bounces and just rolls. So obviously the <laughs> pitch it it the bounce just up, up, just up Then it bounces, just rolled into the back of the net. See you talking about eleven v elevens when man just trying to shake it up. Should I seen about eleven v elevens he did at Broomhill last year? Oh my God. Maybe eleven v I joined in. I made juice come and help take it, <laughs> and I joined in. I was going off my tit. I played set at half, didn't I? <laughs> What's your oh. thinking behind <laughs> that? Maybe I thought I'd bring it up, but what's your thinking behind that? Maybe like he said, stop it. No. Then I want you to do that there, I want you to be here. Aye. So you're actually doing it in play, do you know what I mean? Yep. I actually like it, do you know that? Yeah, I, I like him be 11 in training. I wouldn't tell you whether I did it was when, when Mick McCarthy came into Sunderland for his first week and they just went, right, use 11 are playing against that 11 today and see the best 11 out of that. That's my team on Saturday. Mm. So I thought that was fair because if you don't know, if you don't know the players, it's always crisis mode to an 11 v 11. So to be fair, Gordon Stratton lived in 11 v 11 every Aye. Monday morning with the boys that never played. And some of the reserves, but we, we would then play a reserve game on the Tuesday, mate. So you'd be playing a fucking 90 minute on the Monday against good players, mate, and then you're expected to go okay. and do really well on the Tuesday in your reserve game. You're fucked, man. Aye. When we signed the boy Roman Burrell that's flying for Cove Rangers, so he'd been at Kelly the full season, 
hadn't kicked the ball for us in a game. So John McGlynn phoned me, says, what are you saying about Roman? A few of the boys have said he's quite good in that. And I said, Gaffer, he didn't really play right. But it was an absolute nightmare to play against on a Thursday. <laughs> but see the 11 v 11. Well, and uh, the manager's like, right, I'm setting the team. Then he would just cause absolute mayhem down channels and well, stuff he, like. he was always on the other team he was and he would just, uh, that's played. the worst for a manager, uh, isn't it? He, he came alive on a Thursday. It always happens to him, doesn't it? See when the manager puts out his team for a Saturday and then he puts the jobbies up against them. Jobbies job always always, always, you, doesn't always, it? Always, <laughs> always. See, always. he's a manager, he must be like, ah, fuck. Aye. <laughs> well, uh, I love his interviews, mate. I, I, I think he, he, he makes me laugh, but I really like him as a coach. Has he gave any team talks or after games that have been quite funny? Nah, I mean, he is quite funny without meaning it. Man, like, the boys, it. like the boys do love him, but like he must be quite a good manager for fans because he genuinely there's no secrets. I mean, he will go through goals, he'll go through performances, and our meetings on a Monday. I mean, there's no hiding place. There's no hiding place. Yeah. We get the video up, and why did you do that? And so he has throw, he just loves football like he absolutely yeah. loves it you can tell I mean we know we are, we are playing TNS on Saturday I mean we are going to know I where mean, TNS are going for pre-match and before the game Saturday I mean we'll, it'll not be for a lack of preparation same as Bonnie Rig people say oh did you underestimate Bonnie Rig I'm like no, no, would, no. you've not worked with McGlynn if you think we underestimate anyone like, no. we, we do shape in meetings before friendlies there is that uh, <laughs> That's mad, isn't it? Always, every single game. It's four cut full time. So yeah, that's that's time. I did the only full time in that league. No, Hamlet no, Hamlet. I'm just Hamlet too. Hamlet. 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 But but the four cut train at the stadium. Sorry, I did chance. But I mean, there was there was a lot of talk last year when you came into the club. It was like, look, if we don't go up this year, we're going part time. Like, there's no, no fan owned, and it, it was actually a Scottish Cup run that gave us another crack at it this year. And, um, obviously, we've not lost a game. Four cuts. See, the thing is with McGlynn, mate. See, when McGlynn was a Hearts youth team manager. He used to bash the boys' teams. He used to kick the ball along all the time, and then he got a job with Celtic with Brendan Rodgers, and he completely changed how he how he seen football. Like and now him. his teams pass it through. through like, uh, he's really good. I like him. Mate. He loves Brighton. Does he Honestly, love Brighton? Yeah, love, uh, uh, Brighton's his team. Is that right? Loves uh, the deserve the ball. Loves it. Football, huh? yeah. right. Uh, right, Andy, your first start, mate. Where's the strip? Oh, I brought it in for you. First strip. <laughs> Motherwell's trip. I was on the, the kit man was watching the podcast last week. Under that one there. All right, Sorry. Okay. Where? Oh, oh, under there. Is there a, here and it kit, is, lads. The kit man at Motherwell, Aldo, was watching the well, podcast. That smells like week. he gogs his breath. What are you doing with that? That's brand new, that. He's stuffing it in his government. <laughs> so he said, so got. He, gave, he was nice enough to give me the strip. He said, I watched the podcast so you can hang it up. Who the, the, the kit man does? Man, aye. Aldo. Mm -hmm. Aldo, what a man, yeah. I like, I, do you know what? I genuinely do like Motherwell. We've got a wee boy on loan, Matt, Matt, the goalie. Aye, aye. Great kid, mate. Great. Everyone you get from Motherwell are always really nice boys. Better colour scheme now, isn't it? He's, uh, he's, a, he's a good goalie, by the way. I can't go over the number 11, though. I still can't. Why are you number 11? Giggs, you in it? Giggs, you in it? I just came in and they, they gave me it, number 11. Mate. How was your first start? Shattered? Do you know what, mate? I felt miles better than I thought I would. The first half. But then, uh, it was like five minutes into the second half. We've defended a cross that's got headed to the edge of the box and I backtracked a couple of steps to jump and he'd and both my calves like straight away just tightened up. And uh, it was obviously pre-planned. The gaffer the gaffer's been brilliant with me, he pulled me in the Friday. He just says uh, my plan is to play 60 minutes. How do you think you would do? And I was like, brilliant. So that was good for me. See, even the second half, I'm thinking you've got 15 minutes. Man, to just through. run to your empty for 15, you're coming half. So that I think that helped because the second half I did feel it a little bit leggier. Uh, but just knowing I had that 15 minutes, it was just empty in it for that period. But we were good, mate. We were, honestly, we were really good. Not the worst half. point in the world either, away there, is it? They're in the no, way. but I think sometimes it's it's even more frustrating. Like if, if you don't play well and you get a point away to St. Josh, and you think, nah, do you know what? Like we've no played well, but we picked up a point. But based on a performance, coming away with only a point was, was disappointing. But that's, four what, that's, that's what I said to obviously Paul's in the team. So you, you check the scores at the end. One each away at St. Johnson, never an easy place to play. Mm. Livingston get beat, Ross County, not nah, a point away for it. Aye. And then you get shot down by my dad and Paul, saying, nah, should have won. Both of them should have won. Uh. Yeah, Peyton aye. had a couple of chances the second half, didn't he, where he goes through? Aye. He's unlucky with the first one, I think, second one, he should have shoot, shouldn't he, tries to take it in the goal? Aye, Theo has a big chance first half. Uh, yeah. And again, it, it was just like territory with Fields, I thought, run the, run the box for, for loads of periods, loads of crosses, you know, really amount to much. But like you say, that's four unbeaten now, so. See in that four unbeaten, is it one win and three draws or is it two? Three friendlies that was, isn't it? Two. <laughs> Played three uh, friendlies in the... Two, two, <laughs> uh, two wins and two draws. Well, I, I, feel feel like, the I feel like Motherwell, that bad run they were on and they've come back and obviously had four undefeated but I feel like the, the two of the draws they could have won the games. Nah. And like 12 points out of four compared to what the run well, was. Well, Hibs was 90 minute equaliser, nah. wasn't it? There yeah. you go. So I feel like, like Motherwell, they have turned the corner for the meantime. Obviously it must have been that night, obviously Kettlewell was in... 
Ich habe 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 ich We've, we've spoke highly on, but now you have one of the players. You know what I talk to highly? I know he's he's next day, that. but he's good. Again, I, I say, I've said it so many times, I think as a footballer, the biggest thing is clarity. Like, you just want to know what your role is in a team. You want to know how your team wants to play in the possession. And again, like you said about terms of preparation, we've got naked points about our preparation. Mm. Everyone should know what's expected is going on. His brother's a much better player than what people think as well, I think. Mate, he's very good. Yeah. I, and I've said that for ages, even when he was at St Mum Hibs. Uh, I think he's just one of them that see because he's a 7 or 10 out every week mm, and he's unnoticed. just doing his job it goes unnoticed sometimes but the full back three to be honest at the weekend were really good St Johnson's only chance to end up scoring for it they had another sort of chance at the last 10 minutes of the game but we restricted them to, to very little throughout the game what is it he's a play for? is it 3-5-2 or is it it's like a 3-4-3 three, four, three, four, three, but it's like the box box, box the, midfield the picture, huh? he's so wiry your brother mate isn't it <laughs> Do you know what I mean? He's like, he doesn't, he doesn't look strong, mate, but see, when you get up close to him, he fucking... Does he, aye? Uh, he just does I, the basics really well, Paul, doesn't he? I, I, I really enjoyed playing with him. He's, he's, he's just got, he's got better, and I think he's got more of a kind of swagger about him now than he had because he's six, six, seven, high. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, he knows he's comfortable, he's really comfortable at a level, and he knows he's in, like, at Hibs, I mean, the amount of times we, we play Rangers or whatever, and the whole thing was just like, right, Paul, deal with Kent, it's fine. Mm. Obviously, top player, but he just, yeah, he's so trustworthy, and... and as the years have been on, you just get better and better with the ball. Remember we were playing at Dundee and it was John was playing for St Myrna at the time. <laughs> and Paul smashed John. And John's on the deck and St Myrna on the counter. And uh, Paul should obviously run back and sprint. He's he seen it as his brother and he's like, you alright? <laughs> so I was like, you fucking asking your wee brother, is he alright? And they're fucking trying to score a goal against him. <laughs> what a boy he is. Uh, Hearts Aberdeen, your old team. Right. Big result for Hearts. When I, I need yeah. to, the first thing I want to ask you is about is Miofsky's foul. I know, but you got under the rules of the game, but that rule needs the to be fucking banished, mate. The rules of the game are shite, right. they need to change that, because... We Who's know. sat in an office and went like, let's make up if two players running into each other, it's a fucking foul. I know. It was, it was harsh, wasn't it? Really harsh. I mean, it's one of the best goals of the season as well, it's just been chalked off. I know, I took that moment away from him, but... And see the thing, that the, was it Bering with me? He wasn't even interested. No, he wasn't arsed, mate. He wasn't even <laughs> he arsed. He wasn't arsed, mate, I know. And, uh, but that's the thing now, it's like any chance of getting a goal chopped off or a free kick or a penalty or something, desperate. players are now desperate to get it. But I thought it was always like a clear and obvious mistake. So she on that, so right? So we're, we're on that, it's a clear and obvious mistake from the ref. So see if, see if, me ask, see if they run into each other, so Bering was on that way, see if both of them fall over, Aberdeen cross the ball and somebody for the left wing runs out Is yeah. it a foul or not? Aye. I think they'll say that Miofsky still initiates the contact even though it's accidental but again I'm, I'm with you I think it's harsh. Mm. Like, I don't think you can it's hard because is it still a foul by the laws and again I hate talking about the laws because we're going to go into another decision at the Kilmarnock game where you, you can disagree with the laws but as uh, if they fall on that and says no it's still a foul even though it's accidental I'm not sure but I'm like yeah, is that a clear and obvious error that that's not a foul Aye, I was sure. looking but I mean you're looking for has he moved at all in any way to initiate the contact Aye, like, I, like even just put his foot out or anything none no nothing and Beningamy's no he's not going to stop the cross he's not close enough to no, that's like, right. actually Aye. stop the cross give, give, the, give, the, the, give the idea of they've always went to VAR and looked at it so let it play and actually think to yourself, is Benningme going to get back to stop him passing that ball to Miofsky? Probably not. So why? Like, but who, how do you decide if Miofsky runs into him or he runs into Miofsky? Aye. Do you know what I mean? Because he's behind them. That's fucking wild, isn't it? I hate rules. Scottish football. See, when I seen that the goal had been chalked off, mate, because what a finish it is. That's well, some eh? finish, aye. Lovely height. But not as good as Shankland's finish. Holy fuck. I think that's the second time. He's, he's, only, scoring, what, he's only scoring worldies now, Shankland, isn't I, he? I, that's a joke yeah, I finished Oh him. my god I think that's the second time he's done that outside the boot Wellington's done it mate Aye, maybe, there you go That is a joke yeah, I finished It's like that boy that um, Stand and start Like, Aye. yeah Again, like, we, we all that, that technique's no easy anyway But I think on the run something is a bit, a bit easier You can guide pace with it yeah. But the boss still He's still He's had to generate all the pace And it's pff, He's, uh, he's I guess a good goalie Kelly, it's a good goalie uh -huh. you, He's not leaving hearts, is he? I can't see it, mate No yeah. Well, I've said that. What I like about the goal toys, the wee guy that had the boys just like, move it away and give me that. Because right. somebody's actually running onto the ball, isn't it? George Grant, I think. George Grant, and he's just put his hand out, give me that, bang, top bin. Uh, what about Barry Robson? Where does this leave him? I think it was Aberdeen. He said, this, well, he said that this was a must win game in terms of trying to get third. They now play 
Dundee at home, Celtic at home, and then Rangers away. I feel sorry for him because he, like, I mean, don't get to watch the game, he watch sports scene, and they look as if they played really well. And, and that first goal, if that may obviously goal counts, I mean, some of their best performances have been big games, tough games, like obviously the win at Ibrook, some of the European games. You get that, you get at half time 1 0 in a good performance, you never know. Mm. It looks different, but yeah, tough to lose that game. It's 19 points behind. Aye. Third, 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 hearts is third now, isn't it? Hearts, hearts have what, 19 points out of 21, I think it is. Yeah. That's some and run, because at, at one point... Best, we were, best in the league. Aye, at one point we were, um, he was on a sugary peg, is he? Fans weren't happy. Mm. Quickly turned it around, but oh, hearts, man. See the wee guy that took the penalty, what was his name? George Grant. If you're taking a penalty, that's how you fucking take a penalty. You walk up and you're been confident. a few bad ones this week, isn't there? Mate, it's been absolute shockers. I, I can probably talk a bit more freely now, now that I'm not there and all, but I, I've always really liked George. George is one of them where I think he's been unlucky at times about the team. I think in terms of ability, he, he, his ability to unlock a defence or see a pass, get a goal assist. George, What's George his best position, it? Andy? What's his best position? Well, I think when they played the 4 3 3, and I think he could play one of the advanced eights easy, but in the 4 2 3 1, he could play 10, could play off the left. I wouldn't say it's his best position, but he could. He could play as one of the two. He's quite, quite versatile. Do you know who, do you know I think I've been impressed with? We are in Forest since he came back. Uh, he's done well, Forest. I tell you what, yeah, the yeah. Hearts fans weren't convinced with him either there for a wee while ago, but I tell you what, he's come in and just got about his business. Get James shots away. Got a bunk in it. That's that, well, that's, that's probably right. what's happened. But he, he just kind of looks like a free spirit in there. He just kind of drifts in, drifts out, his shots away and creates space for other people. And I think, ah, fair play if we are in Forest. So direct as well. Aye. Mm. So direct. Cochrane's good as well. I really like Cochrane. How high could he could play for us like an Rangers Cochrane? Aye. I think He's a bright for me, I think John McGlynn loves him. Listen, we're, we're halfway through the season, but I think team of the year, halfway point. I think the only two can the, the only two candidates for, for me was him and Owen Beck. Okay. And now Owen Beck's away. I, I think Alex Cotton's been the best left back in the league outside that sort of day too. So, yeah. is there a chance they might lose year. him? I've seen they were linked to Penrice. They've obviously, obviously, ah, yeah, obviously. potentially, I, I, but I think it's one of them. I think he's got a price that Hearts are in a financial position where they're not going to sell him for cheap. So and Hearts have agreed a pre-contract with and and the Faroes County. Is that is that saying. been reported? Yeah, a researcher. Is that? What's it, mate? I'll tell you right now. Yeah, and and and, and and if Penrice is true. Or two, nobody. I tell you who else I'm going for. If I'm Hearts, I'm going and getting big fucking a younger face at them. Is it a younger face at them? Mm -hmm. No, but I have a wee diff him. different option up different top. Different option. Hearts have always in in the past had somebody bigger up front. Talk about yourself. Uh, well, obviously myself and big Kyle Lafferty and John Sutton. Defries. And then big Defries. 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 They've, had, they've yeah. always had Young Kowskis. Young, Young Kowskis. Kowskis. They've had, I, fucking great knowledge, mate. They've always had somebody Craig and I always Beatty. think Craig well, 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 we'll not go too far. <laughs> So we'll focus on the good ones. Uh. <laughs> and uh, I always, I just think I, I, I like him, man. He's like, he's, he's a handful. Aren't he? He's different, aye. But is he one of them where once some weeks he looks like a handful, and then the next week he looks aye, like possibly, he for the dog and duck? No. Aye, possibly. But no, I think in a good side like Hearts, I think you'd see a better version now younger. What about Barry Robson? Will he get to the summer? Or say he loses his next three games. Who, who, Aberdeen who, fans are. are who's going to come in and do better with what that? Like it's a bit. Got like, a good squad, Kev. That's what I mean. So, aye, that's what I mean. So. I think I think I think in certain games at certain moments I think they've been unlucky, unlucky with decisions going against them. Yesterday, uh, Saturday's game against um, uh, Hearts, the stats in the previous visits to Tynecastle didn't they look promising for Aberdeen, and the way Aberdeen's results have been, it only looked like it was ever going to be one winner. But had that free kick not been given and Aberdeen go one 0 up, it's a different game altogether. And then obviously if you look at the penalty with Nicky Devon putting his hands up. Like, that's they two, they have two big moments that they swung that game in the favour of. I think that's game. a penalty. He's obviously trying to take. Ah, move his hand it's just the laws of the game. But he's trying. It's a penalty, penalty. Aye, but it's it's unfortunate. But that's a moment in the game where you think. You know what I mean, so it's Barry Robinson sometimes a wee bit unlucky. But Aberdeen have been too. They've, they've, they've sacked a lot of managers. Didn't, well, I know Glass ah. never really got a lot of time. Does he deserve after what he done last year? Does he deserve to get the end of season start of next season? Yeah, um, you don't want to chase managers out. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, what he has done is dug out results when he's needed to and you think obviously Dundee's probably a must win in terms of a league position you never know Celtic Rangers coming up um, but Celtic Rangers aren't playing great are they? no Just no no, no. Um, so he might need to he might need to get a result in one of them but as I said I mean he's, he, he did such a good job last year and you do I mean the fall off has happened over the years in Europe first half of the season so I, I think tomorrow night's a big one though mm. I do think that the second part of the season, now they're out of Europe as well, week to week. I know it's not been a good start for them, obviously, but I think that Aberdeen, again, I'm a you, I think Aberdeen squad's very, very good. Mm -hmm. And I think now they're Saturday to Saturday, when they keep bodies fit, I'm, they'll be fine. Yeah, we boy Clarkson's a good player as well, didn't yeah. he? I think he changed his position right. at 1 0, they were saying on sports, didn't they? Clarkson's at um, 
the Tarson's good, Mayos is good. McGrath's good, good player, Shannon's good, good player. Like, they've got good Barron good player. You get Barron very good, I like Barron. Duke, Duke, uh-huh. Duke, he doesn't even get a game. I mean, he comes on, but they should be doing better than what they are. I think that they're in a good position in terms of, are they just outside the top six? I think they're seventh or eighth. Yeah, right. But they've got games in hand that could take them into the top six. It's just a case of getting a few runs together because six, nine points shoots you up. I know their next three games, Dundee, Celtic, Rangers is tough. But they might be the games where you, I think Dundee's a must win in terms of Barry Robson keeping the job to give, give, give himself that opportunity of Celtic and Rangers. But there's no reason why I say they can't go and get a job. Still finish fourth, so fourth couldn't ah, they? They could finish fourth and they bother. Uh-huh. Uh, before we move on, uh, Steve Avery, guilty or not guilty? You've <laughs> 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 never watched Making a Murderer? No. Have you not? No. Oh, you what do you watch? What sort of stuff do you watch? I watch loads of Netflix, so I don't know why I never got into that one. Just finished Ken. Ken, uh, Ken. Ken. Well, the first season or both? Oh, oh Ken's, Ken's good, mate. No, nah, just the first season. I know, I started the second one the other day, it's outrageous. Nah, uh, it's good. Ken. Did you watch the Michelle Keegan thing? Ah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I've seen I know, that. mate, but what a load of shit. <laughs> Fuck's sake. I've, I've never seen a woman leave her kid with so many strangers. <laughs> right, I'll see you later. I'm gonna fucking. What <laughs> a stranger, mate. It's a bra or No, but the guy in the fucking army, she just kept like, leave the mad creep who fancies her. <laughs> kept leaving his her dorm room. <laughs> oh, it was doing my tits. Gaze, have you shot at these, but. <laughs> How does it look? Good. Have you seen traitors? Hey, what they suit you? Traitor? No, ah, everyone's traitors raving about traitors. traitors but can, I see best. can I see it? I can see it then. Fucking hell. Yo, it's right. like, I, I can't even. Have you still got the Liverpool band on? The <laughs> Liverpool band, mate. Free drink. Me, myself, and I did in it. Who shorted out for you? Eh? Who shorted out for you? Jurgen. No, I can't see a hang. No, you suit them. I mean, read, can't read, see read, a read, read You that. suit them, mate. You look handsome in them. I can read that. I'd take the clays right after you, then, man. This week we're joined by Steve McGinn. Thank you. Three Jamie Dunlin there with the glasses on. Actually, looks like McGinn, get them on, mate. No, I don't. Your dad wears glasses, didn't he? Your dad wears glasses, didn't he? Aye, I'm glasses, didn't he? Aye, uh-huh. I'm uh-huh. And your mum, huh? Both teachers. Aye. Who was Finally or secondary? Well, my mum was my teacher. No, nah. That must mate. be the worst, mate. Oh, is, mate. Uh, is it clear now since John's done better than used to that they like him better? Is he the favourite? Ah, aye. That's brutal, isn't it? Aye. So like, if he comes in, is it always him that gets asked questions and everyone always wants to talk to him? Nah, just like, I don't know, just because my mum, my mum likes helping people out. And then obviously because loads of people always want ah, to shut and that. Nah. Nah. So, uh, you so know what, one of your folk it was, nah? Nah. <laughs> 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 They're available, still for sponsorship. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone's watching. <laughs> Do you still hate Christmas dinner or not? Because you'll be playing, won't you? They were playing. What we did this year was, so Paul went with his uh, in-laws and I went my mum and dad's, we alternate it, but Hugman A, we were all off, so we went to John's flat in Edinburgh and had a good day, Black Ivy. It was like in our Christmas. Oh, amazing. Good day. Super. Squeezed in a couple of pints again. To be honest, did, did he pay for it? He paid for a uh, lunch, aye. Oh, what a hero. And then, again, be honest again, is he's just in there fucking huge, huh? That's nice. You love him, that's the new I don't know, but how good, mate. Like a wee guy that's came to. Uh, class, mate. I, I love shit like that, mate. And now just fucking living the life. Aye, I'm <laughs> It's so good, man. What will he do after fit, fit more? Who, John? John. I don't know. Don't Could know. he just chuck it forever, huh? Like, no need to do it. I don't, I mean, he's doing his licenses at the minute. Is he? I think he's doing them together with Paul, and Paul's quite proactive and into it. Because I always thought John would be more into it than Paul, but I don't know. I, I feel as if John's one of those guys who's turned into a pundit. Like, you stick him in front of a camera and he's just. Quite natural, isn't it? It's uh, like, imagine you three as a management team, that'd be funny, man. I know the McGinn. I'd like to see that. Like, I, I phone him sometimes, like, why are you phoning me? And then he'll do anything for Villa, like media team. He'll just like walk, dress up as Santa or something like that. And I'm like, I can't even get you on the phone. Phone in, but you'll dare him for Dressing up as Santa. To say, I know, that's it. Right, Hibs were on a uh, 2 0 down, came back to draw two each. Uh, talking point, the red card. For you, it's red card. Never a red never card, a red card in a million years. Never, no. Let's football, man. And I'm not even going to say it, but the fuck. No, I say it. Come on, Specky. The, 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 the punditry that I watched on the incident. Who are you talking oh, about? Name names. Who are you talking Charlie's been getting tight, isn't Charlie it? McGrew. But no, but what Charlie's saying is by the laws of the game. I games, know, but why get involved in that argument? It's just be a football player and stick up for the football player. It was a great fucking tackle. He won the ball. Can I ask you something, though? But the fact that a referee's looked at it would tell you that. Refs shouldn't have got a fucking clue. Don't even go to refs. Don't uh, back up the refs. Refs don't have a clue. Should never be a red card. No. I get that. But see, when you actually watch a replay, right? See where he catches him. Half his studs are on his foot. So it's not even that high. Aye, uh, aye. Uh, it looks initially as well as if his legs actually brushed along the floor before he hits him. Wins the ball, makes contact with the ball. I get it, you're extended and people talk about this excessive force. Excessive force is the biggest nonsense gone because you cannot make a tackle without force. It's uh, impossible. 
So wait, I, for me, there's a lot of them that's been borderline. I remember when the Ross County boy gets sent off against Celtic early. For me, that's a red card because he's blindsided. He can't see him. He turns. He catches him like ankle yeah, above the ankle. Remember it. He's basically caught his foot. But it's the, for that me, it's made never a, a calculated card. decision. On the speed of that Who, boy, the is, sorry, no, the player, the, the player has made a yeah. tackle. He's made a calculated decision. As he's the, the, the what do you call it? The Hibs boy's dribbling with the ball. He's timed that perfectly to win the ball. See if he doesn't time that perfectly, then it's a bad tackle because he doesn't get the ball. But he's timed that perfectly. So he, so in so my the eyes, Hibs player touches it before I, he hit. Then it's a. It's, so in my yeah, eyes, yeah. he's used his like ability, his pace, and his skill and his thinking his to time that properly to touch that ball and win it, which he's done. So that's that's a good tackle in my eyes. So had that Hibs guy touched that ball a wee bit further and he missed times it, then it's a foul. But he's fucking timed it perfect. It's a great foul. It's a great free kick. Mm. And again, I think, that the, I think we need to get away from this. The rules need to change somehow. You it's know what? The ref's what five yards feet or something. Aye, and you know what it's like. It always looks worse when seeing the player's so ankle. It sort of buckles aye. like that. It always looks worse. But come on, man, that's that's not. It's never a red card in a million years for me. You've not never. played under Varet. You're legally you're, you're just the Scottish Cup semi final. Uh, how did you find? Was the game two minutes in? Yeah, it was a handball penalty. That's right. Talk about what, how important the first goal is. And honestly, I remember. You get all the VR meetings and that, and you're listening to their audio, and you think this is all right. Two minutes, I didn't even know anything had happened. No. Leon McCann's just for two yards, it's hit off him. And I remember uh, Nick Walsh, I think it was. He's like, so it's a pen. I'm going, what? So uh, and Nick Walsh isn't the, he's not even blinked an eye when, when it actually happened. Nah. No, like I don't even think the Inverness boys claim for it. That's um, crap, isn't it? Uh-huh. But one of the big talking, well, for me, just personally, ex Kelly a couple of years ago, see Danny Armstrong's turnaround at Kelly, it's amazing. Mm-hmm. No, he wasn't even getting on for us sometimes, the champ, and such a brilliant character, he was so important for us, like off the pitch and that, but yeah. he hardly kicked the ball. But at Rafe the, as well, mate, hardly, hardly he, played, did he? Honestly, he was on the bench. I'd say he's one of, he, he, right now, he'd be in the short list for player of the year. Uh-huh. Which well, cre- created the most chances in the league. Most, most crosses in the league. Mate, some of the crosses he puts in are a fucking joke. Uh, well, he sets up the two goals Saturday, didn't yep. he? That's your dream, man. If you think oh. of Peak, Aberdeen, like Niall McGinn, Johnny Hayes. Similar. I think Derek McInnes has been perfect for Danny. As good as Danny, vice versa, he's just brought the best out in him. He's absolutely flying. Aye. It's like it's like he's simplified the game of football, that boy. It's as if, like, whatever he was trying before, either wasn't he working but now he just gets the ball goes one way comes another way and puts balls in he makes defenders defend but that's yeah. him, that, that's and that's like that's that's so valuable in this modern day game I mean, you've, oh, got Kyle, high, I mean yeah. you've got Kyle Vassell in the box like he knows that that's coming he's a handful I just think the quality of the balls he puts in is outstanding yeah, and he's Kelly, hold him. This, but, this window so what, what's Danny Armstrong's ceiling is Danny Armstrong still and gone? Five foot three. Nah, but my <laughs> point is, is it, is it a heart, a big move? That's so, so, so back in the day, you do wear like Kamal, like a St. Mirren or a St. John's, and you get a move to Hibs, Aberdeen, mm. um, Hearts. Hearts. So is it, is it a move to somewhere like Hearts? Is Hart need a left winger like Danny Armstrong? Uh, but the football's changed. I, 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 Aye. I play with Lewis Morgan. Yeah. Similar ish to, to Danny Armstrong in terms of like that. We Danny could go to MLS, have a right good career for himself. Yep. Not that, sorry to any Kelly fans, but no. it's in my way, but. No, uh, um, like he could go and get that payday because what, what, what he does, is he? I mean, Scotland, but he could Not go. Well, he'd be about 28 or something, is he? See what you're saying, that, and being a, a proper Derek McInnes winger as well, I always think, like, see when you've got like a Vassell and a Watkins up front. So, for example, you put Danny Armstrong in a Hearts or an Aberdeen where sometimes they cross it, sometimes they don't. Yeah. Their two strikers knows when he gets it, a cross is coming into the box. They're so they're to just come attacking yep. the six yard box all the time, Matty Kennedy. That's by design that he gets into the back post for that second goal because he knows any time Danny Armstrong. Even the first one, crossing. Andy, it's it's an own yeah. goal, and it's just because of the the, the cell knows that he cuts back on his left foot. He's putting that in. Can I make it difficult for defenders? Kennedy's a good player as well, man. Mate, yeah, he's a good, good. player as well. I like Kamal. Got they, they were see, so comfortable in the game as well until that sending off, didn't see, they? See the championship year, see when he came in. So obviously we signed Lafferty, and like he would do stuff. He'd say, right, play will be going on. Like Stephen, blah blah blah, play, but always have that switch. Laugh, you just go and peel out onto the fullback. Fraser Murray was a left wing at the time. You stay high as well. Always have that ball. We almost play it and then when it's on, hit, hit laugh. Don't win the ball, laugh. Just make sure the right goes to the left winger, then we all hit the box. And everyone so. just runs off a laugh. And it, it was just so simple, but it's so well coached. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's good. Uh, Nick Montgomery. Again, seen a few ha- Hibs fans on Twitter, no happy, but again, he's another guy that needs a bit of time, doesn't he? Hibs kind of just keep getting rid of the managers. He's only had one time there. Hibs, 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 Hibs one million percent can he be getting rid of managers because no. every manager they go through 
the same thing happens over and over over again. Yep, yeah, it's not been a great season, but they're still in the mix to go on a run of games that could take them right into the third, yeah. fo- no third, I think third's too far away, but they could easily get into fourth or fifth. No bother, you look back and think, right, that's not been a bad season because he's tried to play his way out from the back. Even when you saw the boy when he get, when he gets sent off, Hibbs then started like using that extra amount of time, turning things around the corner, playing one twos, getting yeah, in. Levitt, and they probably, I think they probably should have won it then with the with, with Goyd's <laughs> header. Yeah, Doidge's chance. Doidge's, yeah. Doidge's, he's got to score. I think he's got he to score. He did not. He had them one, didn't he? <laughs> Fucking. Uh, I don't fancy. know where he said it, but they are going to be just going to rename themselves <laughs> Bournemouth Reserves, are it? Just sign it. I tell you what, just sign it. Anyone that signs to Bournemouth is not going to get me. You're going to, you're going to have that. <laughs> <laughs> just get sent to Hibs, but he's Boyma- a good player. Boy McCondes get some CV. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Comes, he's been it. Who else has he been it? Can't remember now, but it was like last night. <laughs> <laughs> I asked you what it was like last night, is it? But I forgot. I use the same Montgomery, he needs a bit of time. Have you played at Bournemouth? Like, played at Bournemouth, I had. You imagine like 10 years ago, ever no. thinking that Bournemouth would be, Hibs would, Hibs would be a kind of feeder club for Bournemouth? No. <laughs> Bournemouth were terrible when I was when I was doing their mate. Well, when Eddie Howe first got a job, they were League 2, weren't they? Yeah, League 2, mate. Like to pure terrible atmosphere in that as well, mate. Tiny, tiny, tiny club yeah. compared to Hibs. Uh-huh. They're even even the stadium now. Can't even the. Ah, uh-huh, the stadium's stadium. poor, isn't it? Uh-huh. But are you the same. Mc- Montgomery needs a wee bit of time. Aye, uh, the only thing I would say, I mean, I spoke up. Uh, I thought he needed defenders in. I right, don't know. Yeah, I mean, in. still need a right back. I mean, they've been trying sixteen-year-olds at right back. It's still been a. They've played well, a boy. Came on, didn't it? Del Ferrier, who was an attack midfielder on loan Edinburgh City, played a couple of games from right back and. We're nearly the, near the end of the window and they've still not signed a defender. So mm. Louis Stevens is forty two now, he's still playing left. Paul Hanlon's fifty five. Uh, so, uh, these guys, I mean, it's not their fault. No, no, no they, they still go out and give their best and do a good job. I mean they get a bit of stick at Hibs, but never ever do anything but give their best. But it's mad, isn't it? Like you've got a guy whose job is recruitment. And we're sitting here saying Hibs need defenders. What the fuck's he doing? Aye, but I think everyone going into the window thought that, that was an area that Hibs were going to stand for. Huh? Especially knowing that Bashiri was away for Afcon as well. They're already a centre half done. Hey, Lewis Miller's. No, but Lewis Miller's that, 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 that way probably way helped Hibs fucking Bashiri going to Afcon. <laughs> <laughs> They're flying, mate. <laughs> Congo beat Egypt that. last night, didn't they? Who beat Egypt? Congo beat. It's Congo. Is it Bashiri's Congo? Uh, it? Uh, and they beat Egypt last night. Did they? There's a few games. Oh, right, my cost a couple of left backs kicking about that. No plan, man. <laughs> Surely. <laughs> Matt Ritchie. But if they didn't get defenders in, I think top six could be a struggle for him. Aye. Do you think so? Uh-huh. But we have the. Like, Kelly, we, mate, like, Kelly was so This January transfer that, window, Sai, the January transfer window, you don't get good players in January because good players don't leave in January unless their contract's at that right point to offer them mega money. And I've heard, Cheers, mate. Listen. <laughs> Cheers. I, I only moved last I week. Mean, you're not known. You're not known. It's unknown. It's unknown. It's not signed. Uh, uh, I get what you're saying to uh, it. Will but, be but, but, but my point is, by all accounts, what I'm hearing is hips are paying dough. Like good no, money to be, get. Yeah, I've heard about paying good money. So, uh, like, there must be, I don't know. I don't know who you could get, like, the center halves, but. I think a lot of the time as well. Most clubs are in the same boat, so quite often when you've got the similar budgets as everyone else, you end up going for the same players. So no, I can't, it's not a big market for. Oh, yeah, actually, Andy, I was thinking this, you'll remember this, and you'll remember this. See, see you're in England, right? And you've been, always been in England as well. And you're in, the, you're in your, your squad's massive, right? So you've got your first team squad, then you've got the fucking Joeys. See the Joeys, right? That kind of get a game in their team. What are you guys doing? How can the clubs like Hibs and even Celtic to a point? No, go and get these guys that are still very, very good players. What for the Premier League, like? Aye, like from the, you know, like the guys, like maybe I don't know, like the guys that's on uh, the how does it be the wages? Aye, like the, the reserve player that's like banging in 15, 16, 20 goals for the reserves in England, but he can't quite get in the first team, but he's still brilliant. There's quite a few. Huh? Like, how can he got the boy Philip? What's the deal with recruitment? I, I, I fucking I don't even understand. You'd probably get that money doing the leagues in England. Without Championship. Without aye, aye, aye without hitting move, aye. aye. Mm. Is it geographical then? Uh, they'd probably rather stay in the leagues. Right, we're on the Rangers. Philip Clement said the game was... It wasn't likely to be pretty. Sexy. Because of the weather. Sexy. Sexy. Because of the weather. Sexy stuff. <laughs> weather was horrific. Over, was, but, I know, but... Wind. 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 You, can't, you can't pass the ball because it's windy. Nah, I mean, the conditions were... Side. Side. Nah, but nah, somebody pinged the ball 40 yards to the left winger and Tab just stopped and because they thought it was going out and it stopped and it came to the St. Martin player. So I'm saying, is that not even more reason to pass the ball then? Nah? Well, that was a pass. No, on the deck, I mean. I know, well, true, I but Because the, the lineup was a bit baffling, wasn't it? Sterling playing wide left. Aye, I was surprised at that. Sterling but again, in the, the it, it, is that a sort of message of they need players in certain areas? Do you think that pitch? is, Andy? Could huh? be. But when was that? Matondo's been injured. He's then came back. He started two games in a row, obviously, the, the Dumbarton and 
uh, the Hibs game. Can he play three games a week as well? Mm. I'm sure. Ah, listen, uh, I think it's been reported they've they've got a couple probably coming in the areas of the pitch that they they desperately need. I think uh, that front three, I think for me is so uh, there's not a lot right of options, there, yeah. especially with Seaman out for the majority of the season. What, what it seems to be he's going to miss in the next two or three months. I think uh, to be fair, the big Dessers, he's a man's flying. <laughs> You're right. You're, right. You're right. You're right. I tell you what, is he finished? He's he finished fucking it. outstanding, by the way. Jinky, the hair. To take that when the keeper and hit that first time the left foot. The goal should be higher, so eh? I go should be higher, but the wind obviously that's a factor. By the way, his, his overall performance was good as well. It yeah. wasn't just yeah, the goal. He that looks fitter than the thought his link up playing that was yeah. was a lot better. I think it's a confidence thing, the belief thing. See, when I think at that time he went one on one with the with, with Celtic from Joe Hart and he probably should have been and put it away. Yeah. I think you give him that chance now, that he gets takes put it away. I, I think it's just a confidence thing. And you think of the amount of abuse that boy received first coming into the Scottish football and everything else. Yeah, there's still a lot of opinions divided about what they think of him but he scored 12 goals this season I think he's like the second top scorer in the league mm. I think when he continues quite, on he'll finish with 20 goals I yeah. think it was quite good for Dessers in terms of Lammers going so they almost get grouped together together yeah. was yeah. Aye. 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 Right. very good point uh, they get labelled together as the two worst signings uh, Rangers had yeah, yeah. Kevin Kyle and Kyron, France and Daza <laughs> 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 seen reports yesterday a, a, a right winger apparently coming in I mean about time or uh, not. Yeah, yeah. When was the last time he just signed the right winger? Scott Wright's going to Turkey again, isn't he? <laughs> Is he? He's going to Turkey again, isn't he? He's going to Turkey again, isn't he? They're left back from... Is it? Uh, Brazil? Uh, Brazil. Brazil, Brazil yeah. Uh, uh, that's sexy. Diamondi from much sexier from Denmark is it? I like Clement. Uh -huh. Oh mate, I so like they are, mate. I do you know like he's him. improved so many players? Like, see Lundstrom for me. He's what an fine. improvement in Lundstrom, mate. He's fine, Actually, yeah. I always think Lundstrom good player, but plays far too safe. See the last his last two performances. Boy plays for Red Van. Boy plays for the goal. I feel like I feel like Lundstrom's getting about the part better. Like See, I always thought he'd done that quite well, Kat. I just thought he played quite safe, Lundstrom. Aye, with the Saturday, that was diagonal over the ball. Over, over the, the top. Like, it wasn't just, it wasn't two dancers, it was into the space four yeah. dancers. And it was a nice weighted pass. But no, I think, um, I, I think I was reading about the stats where, where Rangers defence, I think they've only conceded something like four. Four away from home. Four, four away from home, that's aye. solid. And then obviously see the defending the big John Suter to try and make sure that they go up the road with yeah. three points outstanding. Aye. Obviously St Mirren had good chances by the way. Yeah, they did. Quan had a great opportunity, just snatched at it too late. James and then had a couple. The boy that um, tried to power it instead of just maybe just pass that round Butlin. I know it was given offside. offside but I, think, that was I that. think it would have went to VAR. I don't think it would have been ruled offside. Mm. There's definitely been an improvement in Ridvan as well now. I, mean, I, 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 I like Yelma. Yeah. I, I think he's quite tidy. He gets but, um, forward really well now. He does get forward very well, but I think I think um, Rangers obviously need improvement. They've got to they're trying to sign players like everybody else, but um, there were two games in hand over Celtic. They managed to win them up until that point, and it looks like two points. And they obviously Celtic go and beat Ross County. It's back to five. But Rangers just got to keep grinding away, winning res results, and see what happens. But see, it's I, going to be close. See, I know, I know. Listen, I, I, again, I watched I watched the full game. It wasn't great, but. You've been there for three weeks, you're coming back into three games in a week. Dumbarton's pitch was horrific. Right. Then you're going to Easter Road and sit on the way. Two tough yeah. fixtures, mate. So see you go and win the three of them, regardless of how the any performance was, even yeah. though the, the, the performance against his uh, Hibs at Easter Road was good. He's definitely made them harder to beat, hasn't he? Ah, yeah. Better off the boys. Well. And I think that's what gives them a chance of the league. Definitely. I still make Celtic favourites, but I think how they are defensively is what's giving them a right well, it's chance. It's not just defensively, and it's the goalkeeper. The goalkeeper's outstanding. Ah, he's winning them points, Kev. Yeah, he's, the, he's, he's outstanding. I don't care what anybody says. He's but they need attackers this window. Yeah. And he's ruthless as well because Sifuentes and Lammers are off. That's, that's what you do. They're not good enough getting them at the door. They're mm. just, they're just um, two I horrendous mean, signings, isn't it? Huh? Good money paid for both, am I right in saying that? Well, Lammers was well, money. I think Sifuentes was six months left his contract. I think he's about a million or something like that. But he's not really had that much of a run. But it's got to be said when he has played, he's no, he's no set the world alight. That's for sure. No. So he's obviously came in, had a look at him himself, and thought he wants better in that area. One midfielder who did set the world alight, Rangers, Steve Davis, and I see retirement. What a what a football player! Eh? No, I've, 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 I've spoke to a lot of people about him, and I think I've, who have you spoke to? What names? Hey, George McCartney used to play with Northern Ireland right. squad and that, and he said he was one of the best. Amazing. He's played with a very, very tidy footballer, by the way. Never, never heard a peep out of Stephen Davis, like in the media, or he lived his life well, looked after himself, and played right to a good age. What was he, 40? Was he just shy of 40? Sure 40 now, but he's same age as Louis Stevenson. Late 30s, 40. for sure. Aye, um, nah, well played. To beat Rangers two, two periods through two different times. 
Then he was a caretaker, I bet you that was a dream come true as well, because I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm imagining he'd be a Rangers fan. So. No, he's a massive Celtic fan, mate. Is he? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, no, nah, uh, fair play. Clear, you're the, the most capped British footballer. That's right. Man. Of all time. You play against him, Stan? Aye, it was. So, obviously, the question you get asked in England, just my first spell at St. Martin, it was like, who's the best player at Rangers? Who's the best player at Celtic? All that usual chat. And you've got guys like Ferguson, obviously Mendes, uh, but Stephen Davis was always one of mine. Because he's like he's he was never like physically like really strong. He wasn't quick. Whatever. He was just some player. Do you know what I mean? He was one Aye. of those guys. you couldn't. It's a bit like how I describe a Nakamura. Like you should. You think I, I'd be able to get into him? Today. Uh, could, could hardly get near him. Honestly, he was just if you got too close to him, you just play one touch. If you let him stood off and he dictated the game, some player. That is it. That's what his decision making was incredible. Uh, if somebody uh, came tight down, he just popped. I still, up I still don't think since he left Rangers from his second spell, they've replaced him in terms of dictating the game. I know yeah. Lundstrom's kind of come on to came on to a game but I still thought that was an area they could uh, be looking to replace him great is guy he? as well is he top man great him? guy like so you're talking about he's the most capped outfielder in, in, in Britain but so humble just down to earth would help anyone brilliant addressing him but aye in terms of a player man like see in training like, was he head and shoulders above everyone else Steve Davis again uh, I say this I, I reference this all the time to young players it's he does the best. He does the basics better than well, anyone, classic. and that's why he's so good. He doesn't get the ball. He doesn't take six touches and then ping a sixty-yard dag. He gets the ball, and keeps it moving. He passes forward when he can pass forward. He'll never lose the ball. And again, you're talking about in tight areas. For someone that's no big in stature, big physically, he just uses his body well to right. shift it and just play. And I, for he, he's he'll definitely be one of the best that I, I played with Mackie for sure. What about type of guy does he like drink that or? Like I does, but does again, even then, he's still quite in the drink. He's not even got that mad side in him. He's just that just down to earth humble guy. It's just had some career, but you could you would never tell a difference. But you think he'll go and be a manager? Do you know if that's what he wants to do? I, I'd be surprised if he doesn't, especially considering he's. I know he's done his badges. He's obviously had that caretaker stint at, at, at Rangers, and it's probably one of them where it's sort of been thrown up on him, and he's didn't want to say no, but. Yeah, he's probably had a wee taste for it now that he wants to try and get into it but mm. I wouldn't be surprised if he takes a bit of time off with the, with the family because people forget he's been in rehab for six months he's been, he's been trying to get back fit to play football yeah. again but, uh, he'll have a few quid as well won't he? oh he'll have a few quid as well have a few quid alright that's your dream just to what? be rich isn't it? Ah, rich mate uh -huh. <laughs> never play and be rich third, third uh, sub that never gets used at a big club mate the best <laughs> like Carson. sit with a big jacket on every Saturday <laughs> to enjoy it <laughs> Watch the money go in the bank, mate. You're the same, man. I can tell. Scott Carson. Oh, I was delighted when he, see when he came to Dundee, mate. It was another player ahead of me. That I was guaranteed that was the plan. I was fucking buzzing, man. Uh, right, Celtic are booed off uh, after a one nil win. What's your views on booing teams that have won? Hey, my views are that you've booed your condolent team a couple of times, mate. Coming off the pitch, booed at half time. My, my views are that my views are like imagine you get the pairs to boo them off there's something uh, there's something not quite right when you're booing a team for winning one nil at home I understand that it might not have been the most convincing win in terms of how many goals they scored but they had enough opportunities if you look at the penalty you look at um, Bernardo's chance you look at um, Carter Vickers had a great, uh, made a great head of the, the keeper at the great save Sanders there to win the game 3, 4, 5 it just looked a wee bit uncomfortable because Joe Hart's had to make a save in the ninety second minute, which was pretty straightforward for them, I Ross think, County have been on a horrendous run. I know, I know, I know they have, but they've just Ross County have also signed about three or four players in January. It was a completely different new look team, a new mm, style of play. So six, six new, six, six new. Right. So they, they they actually started the game quite well. And get, <laughs> lost a shot. They, they took the kick off, made some lovely passes under the press, and then the fucking they just fell to pieces after that. Mm. And then obviously Celtic fans are booing, and I think they're booing because. They want to see better signings coming in the door. I think that's where the frustrations are. But, but you also think they want to see a better brand of football. Well, that's another thing because obviously you've said that you've been quite vocal in the past with um, Brendan Rogers. It's quite labelled sometimes. It's like there to there to there to there to there, and it comes back in, it comes back out. Whereas was Ange was quite fast and mm. players were inverted and it was all over the place, and it, but it worked. Kyogo scored eight goals. I know. It's not a horrific brand of football though, is it? No, it's not. No, it's horrific, not horrific, but it's boring. Compared to what you were watching last it's year. boring. Would that have been the case if anyone replaced Angel? I think so, mate. I said that. Aye. I think it was just such a hard job to replace somebody like him. Eh? Have you seen a lot of them this year? Aye. Would you make them? Probably. I mean, my take on it was a wee bit. I think the fans are worried to have a month like they had um, with that Hearts Kilmarnock. They're a wee bit. This is, and they were told after the games it was going to we need quality in, in January. And then all of a sudden, I mean, if they'd said, look, Bear with us, this is a horrendous run of form, we'll get better. 
and then they finished. They, they were good against Dundee, good against Rangers, good against um, what was the last one, St Man. Aye. If they'd said that, look, don't worry. But I think it was a we need quality in January, and then all of a sudden you're into the okay. the last week of the window. Nobody's come in. There's no talk of anyone coming in. The man just kind of playing it down, and you go one 0 up after what thirty seconds or whatever forty seconds, yeah. and you struggle to because Ross County. I mean, Jordan White's is a decent chance but I think the, the, the header the boy's got to score isn't he score, yeah, yeah. What's it? to the corner he the, the boy puts it over the bar yeah, after that one mm. uh, Sims Sims I mean that that's one each That's. I think Jordan White's trying to put into that corner yeah. and he's just dragged it two chances after the centre half came off Carter Vickers Aye. again playing 60 minutes it's, 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 no, it's no pretty to, 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 to look at the, the situation in terms of some of the players that still it's paid to, to bring in and they're now being like the Rangers situation with Lammers and Sequintes, they're now being looked like Nebrosian, it looks like they're trying to get away and stuff. That's no ideal, but I'm pretty sure that if you look at the, the balance sheet there, we sold it, I think it was £72 million or something. There's money there to spend, but you can't kind of just go out and spend it for the sake of spending it. It needs to fit the model, it needs to fit the, the right criteria, because if we keep continuing the way it's going, it's going they to be... They need a back now, don't they? Oh, the, the well, Taylor being Greg, Taylor, Greg Taylor's been very, very good, but even when, when he is number one left back and fit and playing, he still needs competition mm. to push him on to be even better. So a left back, I, I think the boy at own bet would have been ideal, but he got on for Liverpool and that kind of scuppered that. But, um, I'd be raging if I was on back by the way. Oh mate, tell me about it. Brought on Andy 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 I'd be buzzing mate, back to no playing again. <laughs> <laughs> back to Dundee. Because <laughs> Andy Roberts is now back fit. Aye, yeah. he's not going to so play. He's like probably he basically that, paid 18 minutes of football. Is that true about the two, 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 two teams? teams. Aye. I went up to three. I thought you could play for three clubs now. No, that's I'm sure, I'm sure that's him done. He can't, he can't, he can't go. Can't get unless he goes enough. back to Dundee again. That's uh, like I wonder if you challenged that legally, if it would actually be allowed. What a load of shite that is. Well. 20 minutes, man. Man. I just, I mean, when I think of Celtic signings and stuff like that, see, like Macondas, everything you read for the Hibs fans was like, right away, you could tell he's going to improve us, he's going to make us better. Like, I think everyone, every fan, I suppose, I know it's easier said than done, but once you see a player come on right away, I, I don't know if you ever remember Nakamura's debut. Like Nakamura's Nakamura, debut for, it was one of the best debuts I've ever seen it right. just got out to him you think oh my god this guy is unbelievable and, uh, what, and he was just in the door and they played him straight away yeah yeah. he came on as a sub right. I don't know he like, landed or whatever but sometimes some of these players they don't feature for like a month or whatever. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I get what you say he, 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 I think there were players thing. to come in that hit the ground running the fans get after seat and go oh wow what a player we've signed but everybody that they've signed if you think of Paul McCoon because um, obviously couldn't come on there 36 I think he only got half an hour on Saturday so still, I still the jury out in him How was he? Uh, well, my uh, brother You got to see it TV? Um, I know, my brother said this he's no much it just looks similar to what we already have but then that's like but it's has to half an hour you can't even judge But like even I'm not just saying this here but like Paul would say about Andy signing he'd be like we know what we're getting like good solid signing he's going to be good in the dressing room he's going you know what I mean you know what you're getting Aye. whereas like some of the signings are like what are we get. But then see? could you also say the same thing like when they signed Matt O'Reilly? Do you know what I mean? There was a thought. Uh, aye, 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 right, aye. But right away with him and Hitati, but you could tell we're players. That's what I was going to say. That I think that's a football thing where I think you watch somebody for one week's ten of a game and know. Uh, maybe it's harsh saying you know for sure, but you straight away think he's shite or he's brilliant. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. he's going to be you good. You know for yourself when you come into teams and you think that somebody's walked through the door and you think, fucking hell, man, he's pish. But how many people? And they don't ever uh, get any better. How many pe people are unsure of Bernardo when he was in and out of the team? And then he gets around the team and look, look. But I always but again, that's what I'll I'm talking about. What a Celtic players within the dressing room think when they watch them every day. They think he's good, man. He's yeah, got to play. No. Do you know what I mean? I think it's different in I that scenario. That, oh, Bernardo, the the, the 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 writing was on the wall there because he always got a start in the Champions League. Why did he get a run in this game, more games in the Champions League? Because obviously there was something there that, and it was just the league form he had to pick up, and he has picked that up, and he, he does look good. But I see the day there was there's links with like. I think, Eddie Howard ruled out a, a, an option to go and get Matty Target. I said, no, is it Matty Target at Newcastle? Aye. There must be the likes of a Matty Target that's playing on the periphery of England that could get come up to Celtic and give them that boost where the fans think, oh, he's a good player. And if that player doesn't work out, then that's just what happens. But because Celtic's buying in unknown players that nobody really knows. But but see, when you're saying this about going and, like, go and get these guys that you know are tried and tested, like they went and got Shane Duffy and he was hopeless. Ah, he was fucking hopeless, but... And I think it, it, like, Celtic fans are not happy with these project signing, but that's what's worked for Celtic over the last few years. That's why they're battling sheets where it is, because they're selling boys for cheap, they're doing well for a couple of years. And I get the, the, the argument where people are saying, but if I want to improve in Europe, go and sign these nine, ten million players. But sometimes, sometimes who, they don't who, work. Well, who would have seen that Carter Vickers was going to be a, a sure thing when he came up? 
It wasn't. He was a gambler. Do we think well, that Celtic will have an option? So yeah. But do we think that Celtic will have half your deal? just said. I think Celtic will have somebody in before the, the door. I de- I, I'd be amazed if they don't Aye. sign another. In what position? I would like to see another striker. Well, they're talking about Boy Van Hooy. Don't get in the Bologna. Ah, I've seen that. He's a favourite at Bologna. Well, that's Derek about one does this. First does me. I think a left back or a striker. I'd expect. Well, who would play up front? I mean, if see if Japan play South Korea in the final, so there's no Maeda, no. What if Kyogo get injured or suspended? Who plays up front? That's a boy. That's a boy. The one injury away for Kyogo, and I say, say one injury away for Kyogo for, for having a disaster. Kyogo's only scored eight goals, so in terms of relying on. But see, on the eight goals, Kev, I was going to ask you, have you seen him miss a lot of chances, Kyogo? No, because he's not had any. That's what I'm saying. Aye. Still didn't need to maybe. What I liked about Clement when he came in was he never moaned about any of the players or what he had. What he went out and did was he went and became the coach. And coached the boys better. and made them better, yep. made them believe in themselves. That's what you do sometimes. I, they're not doing well now, but if I just keep working with him, keep working with him, I'll, he'll come good because I need to see the good in him. Yeah, I've got no other option. Whereas what we're getting is, is we're getting this negativity all the time. Is oh, I need to do this and I need to replace this, but then they're not coming in. So sometimes the the noise coming out is getting the fans thinking, aye, that's what we need. But there's nothing coming back in, so it's yeah. like. I don't know. It's All fucking right. well, if you think one. it's hard for Celtic to get players, poor Davy at Livingston, man. <laughs> Four one. And did you hear him after it? Like, oh mate, I listened to his. That must be the it. hardest job in British football. It's really difficult because for f- how many years they've been? Four, five. I don't know. Whatever years they've been up, they, they have punched above their weight for so long. And I don't think the 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 the, the SPL now is of a of a strong SPL because if you look at Hibs, Aberdeen, they're all struggling. But even Levy's struggling massively. So if there was ever a time for Levy to try and kind of be more stable this year was this season, but I think it's just a bad... Have you you made some, put your glasses on because you're actually looking, you're sounding clever. Like, <laughs> no, when you, watch, clever uh, well, when you watch the highlights, like Levy actually played well. Yeah, they started off, played well, a couple of good opportunities and then moments of madness. Well, can I say on that? Because this is what I was talking about with Rangers, about, oh, it's the pitch and it's the wind. People add to me all the time, oh, you can't play football at Livingston. She'd done these first two goals. Brilliant, mate. Aye. Passing through the lines, yeah. one touch football. Of course you can, man. I assist for Levy's defender, but what the first two goals? Yeah. <laughs> Who was that? McKellen played on the corner. Penrose no, tries no. to clear one, didn't he? And sort of I kicked it straight to him. Back to back to Yoko. Back to Yoko. The boy, goal is the right centre half for a second. Try to lay the ball come on. Try to set the midfield there. Played the one two, slipped him in, put it away. There was some good football to an athlete, didn't No, McKellen. So for the second goal, McKellen and Merlin's one two. But I mean, it didn't come through. Just laying it back. Through everyone. Third goal. Fucking low, so Levy's got to go back. Ma- oh, up that the park. is madness. Maybe that's a deal foul, with. though. Eh? That's a foul. Oh, Do you don't think that's a foul? No chance. That, Do you think it's a foul? No chance, that's a foul. No, I like, think he pushes Penrice in the back. No, no chance. Imagine being David Martin there when you get it back to 2-1, just yeah, with a penalty, against 10 men, you're thinking, right, here right. we go, a minute. Like, <laughs> okay, can I ask you, what's the difference between the penalty Levy get on Jason Holt to the push for the goal? They're the exact same. And one's a penalty and one's not a foul. Oh, I don't know. Nah. That's a foul for me. I'm not sure the penalty's in the box. I know which which sort of touch uh, and go. I, I, I wasn't sure if that I was can, a penalty. And can yeah. I also tell you, I think that's one of them that the referee doesn't give that as a penalty if he knows it's in the box. Yeah. I think he gives it because he's like, oh, I'm giving it a foul. Here. Then be like, oh, that's in the box, <laughs> mate. Yeah, it's penalty. <laughs> sure. But I tell you what, what is, what is clubs with penalties this, this, this know, year? Mate. Mad, how many penalties have we missed in the penalties are absolutely the, the, the the Palmer's penalties Palmer. no great but Shinny's penalties it's a poor penalty yeah. Yeah. he's Davies saying that that's him in the championship now he said that would you agree I think at this rate he said that yeah. mm-hmm. I can't see um, I can't see them getting any better it's just it's just loads of individual errors and as a manager how do you change that because you don't have the players to swap them over, swap them in, swap them out. It's not as if Davey can say to the two centre halves, like, see, you used to up the fucking road or bring in the R2, but he doesn't, probably doesn't have an R2 to come in. See, I didn't know if he was trying to take, like, try something different, because he's tried to have a go, he's tried a few things, and I don't Aye. know. See, sometimes when a team gets relegated and all of a sudden they start winning games, I don't know if he's maybe going to Aye, more. I, 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 I'm just, we're doing. This is pressure, my fault. Let's take the pressure this off. This is my fault. Head. Look, let's go and finish the season, finish it strong, take a bit of momentum in, and just. Andy's fault for not going alone there. But this Aye. is this is the most negative I've seen even earlier on in the season. This is the most negative I've seen, Davey. So it obviously doesn't rub off well on players, does it? Because even like Stephen Kelly, one gets uh, played back to Stephen Kelly. Back and he's just, oh, it's a bad, he bad. just looks like he's so short in confidence, doesn't he? Make Stephen Kelly's a good player. It stabs it. I mean. He just stabs it and ends up looping. It actually hits the bar. The wind fucking actually helps it and it hits the bar. Am I right in saying Living Ross County play each other tomorrow? 
that, right? so that, that should be behind closed door, that. <laughs> they, should, they should make that behind closed door. I, I thought they were the next. If anybody's got any young kids and kind of get them to sleep, take them up to that game tomorrow night. I don't know, by the way. I think that could be a bit. Could uh, be a 6 5. Uh-huh. Tomorrow, aye. Livy, Livy Ross County tomorrow. Behind closed door. Let's make that behind closed doors, mate. Where that? I'm sure it's Livy. Livy. Aye, Livy. They shouldn't they just, they just not even announce the score, just put the points on the board at the end of the night. Shouldn't even tell people what the score is in that game. If Ross County win that, then. You, that, then that's a, that's a what's Davy going to say? Davy obviously said on Saturday on the radio that if he felt by walking away that would help the club, then he would. But then he, he obviously backtracked a bit, and I'm like, he doesn't fucking know what to do. How can he sack yourself? Mm. But is there a glimmer of hope with the fact that Derek Adams does keep hair meltdowns? He didn't after the weekend though, huh? Uh, because he's got his own players in there. Uh, he can't with, announce them, can he? can't announce them, see now you've brought your own players in, you he's can't... Like, you see what we've come to say like Park? <laughs> <laughs> will, they, will they finish second bottom for you, Ross County? Hopefully, you, so hopefully, so it's no mother then. So it's yeah, no exactly. mother. I like it, Stephen. Who else would be no, I don't, I don't, know, I don't think St John's is at the woods yet. Yeah. They had that initial kick, didn't they? They had the kick and then obviously, no, that's not coming from Andy, but I spoke to... George McCartney somebody and they said that um, Motherwell battered St Johnson and Motherwell shot up I need to know who Dan Kevin I don't want to chuck him under the bus um, no live in there but I'll tell you later I know but I don't think St Johnson because of that like, can still dig at a point aye they'll be like that under Levine even aye. when they're not playing well they'll, they'll dig results at, and then they'll play well maybe win that game 1-0 next against someone aye aye Brilliant, that's just done with the football for the weekend, or not Steve McGill. Oh, let's chill, boys. Let's sit back and question just, the mate, man. Just, uh, we're not going to just talk us through your career for the start. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and just tell us five or six funny stories while you're at it. That's everyone talking about. <laughs> right, mate, broken at the team. What age were you? Uh, I think I've, my 18th debut was my first start. Your 18th birthday was your first start. What year was that? 2006. You scored at Celtic Park, remember it? Was did it you? Your first goal? Your uh, debut? Mate, mate, have you not seen his goal? On his debut, he fucking stan- is it Stange? <laughs> Stange at Celtic Park, didn't you? I was remember sitting in the crowd, Big buzzing. I was in the plane. But it was a score. You stuck it in the Stange, yeah. Uh-huh. Eight five one. Oh, bro. Ah, but it was a fucking belter, mate. It was. It was just one of those. I'd been training with the first team for a bit. We did a few injuries. I think we got beat the week before, and the manager just pulled me in on the Friday and said, "You're playing tomorrow." And see so that way, you're just like, because by si- see after I scored, I scored. I don't know, just right after half time. See by sixty minutes, I was finished. Talk about your calves. I was calves, hammies. Uh-huh. Because like, what was your score at the time? When what was your score when you scored? One each. Uh, that's to right. Make it, make, it one make it one each. That's yeah. right. Aye, they were just. I mean, we used to go obviously with the same game plan, four five one, and um, just half time one 0 But the ball just dropped to me out of the box. I mean, I, I don't think I can do that, honestly. I don't know what I've done. You watch it back sometimes and you think, why was I shooting? Uh-huh. Should have just laid it wide and then get back behind the ball. Uh-huh. But, uh, now nah, it was some buzz. I mean, just going there, like, so there was a Celtic fan growing up. I used to go with my dad. My grand was the chairman of Manic's, isn't it? Aye. Uh, well, I don't, I don't remember that era, but... Uh, uh, he was taking money to the club, wasn't he? No, <laughs> I used to go with my dad and my brothers and then you just get the game every minute at school and you do the whole, the whole emotion of the day and then to score was the thing about scoring is what, I mean, people always talk about you eat a chance I wasn't good enough that I was going to get 15 chances so right away you're like, you've been training quite well with the first team you get into the first team you score it was almost a bit of relief as well you think right I've no I've Aye. no went out and just that's me dead I just know Gus playing against Gus great guy but he can be he can be on you, mate, can't he? I've heard him at the side of the pitch. Gus, similar to you as a young, Gus right, was, uh, Gus was, see how t- Paul always talks about Stuart Kettle when he's honestly he's so good with the senior boys, like looks after us and stuff like that. That was Gus with the, yeah. I mean, our, the first dressing room we had when I was a young boy, it, it was like a panini stickers for you, like when you're growing up, like just legends of the Scottish How, who, who, So who have we got here? Like Andy who Mullen. You, who are you class as a legend of the Scottish Andy Mullen. This, like, yeah. Kevin, Mag- <laughs> Kevin McGowan, <laughs> Scottish Cup winning captain for Kelly. Right. Guys like Matt Riley, eh. Uh, just in any Van Zant and Mehmet, Broadfoot, Milne. Oh, that was kind of the later, the, right. first, the first version, uh, Hugh Murray. Oh, Hugh Murray, yeah. Uh, 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 guys like Gary Brady, I mean, what a player. Oh, Gary Brady, mate. Used to see him at the traffic lights at Postal, mate, sitting right on his way to train my fag at the motor like that. What we a went, guy. We went to Liverpool for a Christmas too. And I, I, I'm not sure if it was a fag or no, questionable. <laughs> 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 he was up in the back of the bus and he was singing jo- uh, Bob Marley. <laughs> so we were all drinking on the way down, he was singing. The guy hardly spoke during the week, just got him a, a couple of drinks in him and he came alive. What, what a player. player. Aye. What, he was, Gus, is a, what, was he ever on you? Gus, I, every day, it was brutal. Brutal, I hated him. Like, I got a great relationship with him now, but yeah. I hated him. It was like, 
he was like, that really hard teacher on you. And I mean, everything was always, I mean, you tried anything outside the foot passes, reverse passes, anything. Used to hear the old dugout at Love Street. So it was kind of panel window. Every time you gave the ball away, but every time yeah. you could hear it on the pitch, I'm like, who was boss? Him or Andy? Andy was brilliant. No. Andy was unreal, but was brilliant. Aye. When Andy, was a Andy, bastard, Andy, Andy was, I mean, so Andy, Andy was hard. Like one day he took me, I had a medial injury, and then the Friday, and he's like, right, come here. Went up to the old away dressing room at St. Mum. Tackle that ball as hard as you can against the wall with your knee, open it up. If you pass that, you can play tomorrow. <laughs> Take me away for the. Tackle sight. a med ball at shoot and our nine month. Pass the ball. Andy, cheers, mate. Went to a middle to a cruise shoot. Pass. Aye, that's maybe when my knee problem started. <laughs> but pass the ball into the wall, he's at. I said, how's that feeling? He said, that was actually alright. Aye, you're fine to play tomorrow. Yeah, and you played. <laughs> played, aye. Did but you know that you answered Gus back, so didn't you? Aye. You'd had enough. So we played. I mean, Andy always stuck up for us, like young players, and he still played with the reserves. We're forty-one, and that he's forty-one. So, like, he was good with super, young players. Super, wasn't he? Centre half, super sort of. Aye. Uh -huh. And Gus would Gus would slaughter you after a game, and Andy said, like, "Don't listen to him. He's fine. You you were fine. You did your job good." He played Celtic Park once. I was on the bench, and uh, but ten minutes gone. Jack Ross gives a penalty away, sent off. You know, it's like ten minutes in, ten men Celtic. So right I came on. I, I can't remember exactly when I came on, but I came on four or five nil down. And I wasn't really to do t at fault for the sixth or seventh goal. Like I wasn't. I came on, probably adding nothing to the game, but the damage was done. You were just making sure it wasn't ten nil. Uh. So we got in after the game, and it was just nothing to Jack, who's been sent off. Nothing to a few boys that have actually thrown goals in or dropped a man or something. It was just I got battered. And then he moved on to Div Barn. He was another yeah, young fullback. Right Div, back, Div was right. my mate, right? Uh -huh. So I'm like, nah. I need, this has been going on for a while, I need to say something here, I need to like, have a go back. So he's going on and on to Div, you know, and I'm saying, Gaffer, why us? Why are we, like, why, it can't just be me and Div. Like, so I meant to say scapegoats, but I said guinea pigs. Feel <laughs> 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 <Pure> nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was, I was, I'd hate to listen well, to you never said why are we always a guinea pig? <laughs> why are we always a guinea pigs? So I can see, like, and at the time, it took so much for me, like, I'm thinking, like, yeah, after, I'm, I'm on the bus, right, and I'm thinking, like, like, that may be done, he might sack me in the morning, but well done, like, you've stuck up for you, you've stuck up for Div, finally, right? And then, uh, I think it was Jack Ross, maybe, come on the bus and he says, we're going to talk about the elephant in the room. <laughs> the guinea pig. <laughs> I just honestly uh, stuck with you and obviously I was huckled into Gus's office on the Monday for answering him back. Were you? Did they say it, did they say it to you? No, nah, he was all right. He's like, fair play to you for sticking up for you, like, sticking up for yourself. You watched it back. You weren't uh, anything to do with the goal I was talking about, so. But see, when you look back, Jenk, you was only doing it to help you? Like, how he was with the young boys? Nah, I'd, honestly, I didn't think he trusted us. Like, I think he just thought, like, you've seen your players, you know what you're getting. Like, yeah. so, I mean, one week I would score, I remember one, after one of the games I scored, you get taken off, and I was rubbish, played against Barry Robson, totally dominated me physically, ran off me, scored, like, I wasn't always good, so he was a wee bit, like, you're under pressure, he knew what he was getting with senior players, he didn't know what he was getting with me yeah. or Div and that, but it was good for my development. Were you there at St Mun when Maris came on trial? I saw so I was. Oh, I need to hear this. I, I was, but I've got no recollection of him training with us. Really? No, I've got nothing, um, like it was definitely that period, but like we were, I mean, Kev would have played against your team. Like I we was were. thinking, when the stadium opened up that day, would you play that day? I played that. Uh, Did you? I uh, can't remember you. Um, <laughs> 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 so so um, Did you play in the middle of a shug? No, so we played like 4-4-2 four, four, two with two centre mids, like out wide. That's we were right, like lads, functional. Like, that's a fucking graveyard shift. You had Jack, Jack Rose, Cuthbert, uh, Potter. Well, Scott, well, yeah, right. Potter. Scott Cuthbert, Potter. Um, at the time it was either Mo Kamara. Oh, Mo Kamara, what a hero, man. Was it Mo Kamara? He used to call Gordon Strachan a wanker for life. I've got a guy who's a fucking wanker for life. Bobby <laughs> Mehmet up front? He used to crack me up. Yeah, like Billy Mehmet. Billy Mehmet, I'm calling him Bobby Mehmet. That's a, a Scottish Oh, okay. Billy Mehmet was a good player. He mate. was a good player. I've got a cracker with Mo Kamara. Right, go for it. Mo's a hero, man. Do you remember Carbon on a Tuesday? Ah, I loved Carbon. So he used to come back to Killian's Flatbush, mate. Great so guy. You had contacts, obviously, and no have to wait in the big queue, right? But I didn't. At the back of the queue. And Mo Kamara's bowled past me and I'm like, oh yeah, beauty. Had three or four of my mates. Mo, Mo, Mo. Can you get us in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you come, right? Um, you buy me a drink, but and I thought, <laughs> I thought he was kidding, right? Because it was a pound of drink in carbon. You that me a drink. <laughs> <laughs> it was a pound of drink, right? <laughs> so uh, he didn't really know any of my mates or that, right? So he's just walked in and he says, he marched me straight up to the bar, Mo. 
so I bought him, bought me my pals a drink and I bought him and his mate a drink, right? So that's not the worst of it. He went looking for all my pals. What did he do? Individually, they had. Why <laughs> tight bastard? Guys playing the Champions League. Fuck it. That's, man, that's man. incredible, mate. I love shit like that, man. But he's a hero, so man. He loved it. But, uh, it going back to that, like we played, we played four centre mids. Like I just, oh. I just know Mares. I mean. Mares probably would have been a winger that's really exciting to watch, no tracky backy. Like, he wouldn't have any answer for us. <laughs> Aye. What about, see, early on, who was, um, you ever play against somebody that you thought, I know you mentioned Barry Robson, anybody else that you just thought, fucking, I'm so far off it? Uh, aye, Barry Robson was Barry Robson's a big one play against aye, mate. physically. Elbows everywhere. Do you play against Barry Robson? Played with him as well. Uh huh. Aye. Where'd you play against him? Uh, when he was at United, he was a fucking monster, wasn't he? I, I can't even think if I did play against him, mate, to be honest with you. But, um, Obviously played with him and we're talking about John having the best arse in football, he's probably second best. But he, <laughs> he had he had an unbelievable arse, an unbelievable elbow, <laughs> wrist. <laughs> but he was just he was very good at using his body. But again, probably underrated in his technical ability as well, because he had a wonder Oh, foot. he's guy yeah, he could play me. Uh, he free kicks. Out all the, see you all the ones to be honest with you, that Stratton took. And you, you see Chris Boyd, Scott McDonald, Big Man. Kevin Thompson, they're probably bigger names, aren't yeah. they? Mick in terms of what he done at Celtic. Rob will probably done the, the best, best for him. Oh, I really like him down there, didn't they? He done well. What about older players in that group? Who were good? Who was good with you? Jack Ross. They were all good, to be honest. Yeah. It was a good. It was honestly amazing dressing room for just learning the game and habits. And but it was it was brutal. I mean, it was obvious the old initiations like Christmas songs and that, and like you'd be getting scudded with like socks and mm-hmm. like yeah. like it was and the jobs you did like the duties and that you did were cleaning out the toilets and that it was. But it was a good it was a good grounding and. Taught me yeah, all the basics for stopping crosses, matching runners like that. I was I was well clued up with all that by the, by the time I left St Man. And then John comes into the first team at the same time as you, is that right? No, 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 no. John so was, John was what was he just playing with the youth team? So John was in the youth team, aye. And so, was there a big hype about him at that, that, that age? Aye, so when I was at St Man at that part, say I was 18, he'd have been 11 or 12. Um, he played in the same team as Andy Millen's son. Right, Ross. So like Gus and Andy would go and watch that team more than they would go and watch the other youth teams but they go and watch and Gus always said see when that boy's 17 the minute he turned 17 he's playing in my first team did he? aye what at 11 and 12 he said that? aye but John was John was I mean John was John was pretty special like young um, Celtic were desperate for him like tried everything in the book to try and get him that's what right because Tommy Burns kept you yeah, Paul used to say to me all the time you're like Tommy Burns doing it if we don't aye. try once try again if we feel a second time then fucked it <laughs> 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 Three or four, I mean, there was two, maybe not as much that, two or three years where everyone else grew and he was tiny. Like, it was, it was tough because you were thinking, I mean, we were, me and Paul were, came into the game late. Like, I know you said, like, I always thought I was going to make it. I didn't, I wasn't one of the best players in my uh, school team or that. Wait, like, man. Was, nah, nah. I, I was, there was, there was a couple better than me. I, I was just, right. I, I, mad about it. So, was your youth, your youth career sitting there in the youth? I like boys club and then just broke into the so like the year see the year before so I, when you're saying that you don't think you make it you're one of the best players you're in a, an academy surely some kids don't even get in no, the same one boys club boys club oh so that's no, like a different a so different I played, ah, right, I, played, got you. I played like in the Glasgow schools and ah, right, Scottish see, Amber, in the same ca- the same calendar year I scored at Celtic Park that's just mad just, uh, that. just came so wait talk me for this you played for a school team the same year as you scored at Celtic uh, Park yeah wow Obviously, like he's cut off. I left school and then I went into St. Martin's. St. Martin's. Because it was that kind of. But it like got to the point when I decided to sign with St. Martin, like I'd been on trial with St. Martin for about two years. And there was big on David Lambert. Two years year trial? Honestly, <laughs> it was like. Because our, our coach for the boys' club was kind of affiliated. He took John's team as well. And he kept saying, like, you need to look at this boy. He keeps getting better and better. A bit like, you know what I mean? Give him a shout out. Who is it? Andy Hogg, right. Andy Hogg, honestly I can't thank him enough, he pushed me and pushed me and at that point, when the point I agreed to sign me St Martin, Dumbarton's first team wanted to sign me so I didn't think, my dad, my dad's like, like just go and sign me them, like, just go and play but I just felt like St Martin was a better pathway and uh, I remember leaving Hamilton the night, St Martin eventually said look we'll sign you, we'll give you a year full time I was coming back to the car and my dad's like look, he was preparing and he said look you're never going to hear St Martin again, like we're away, we're going to sign with Dumbarton. Oh, now. so he thought you were going to get released? Aye, we thought that's what the conversation was with David Lomar. Because it was just, I mean, it, honestly, I just kept, I just, you just get into these different teams. Like, as I say, I didn't think it was one of the best, like, it was boys playing with Celtic, it was boys playing with like, other pro youth teams and stuff like that. And I was just a good, solid player on that, but you just kept trying to break through doors and once you... See, in that wee conversation there, he said something, uh, the hog guy kept pushing him. 
Well, that's like you, we can do that's it. it. Fucking give You're going to be the boys. Give them a wee fucking nudge. <laughs> because see this fucking well done, son. Get up the road. Uh, you Kev Hogger. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, you, you away when John broke into the first team, is it, man? Aye, uh -huh. I was away. But he was like, he was, as I said, he was like, not getting a game for his youth team. Uh, he wasn't, because no. he, was, he was small. So small, yeah. Good for, it is good to, I know. I, we're like laughing and joking but a lot of young football players watch us it is great to hear stuff no, 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 no. that's the thing the small thing we, Andy talked about it a few years ago about the small thing and there are loads of kids that are small and people the old thing is always to be at some points in your career when you're a kid you are just too small that's just a fact but it's not to say that in two months time or three months time whenever the maturation process kicks in that you become that wee bit bigger or you adapt or you learn how to adapt your game. I tell kids all the time, don't get involved in a battle. Let's learn how to play the ball That's right, people. Them, and then it's see eventually, because they've been that technically superior, because they've sort of had to, you have to bridge be. the gap some yeah. See, when they actually do end up matching up to everybody else physically, they just kick on to yeah. another level sometimes. Exactly, and it's, that, it's like this fucking weird bad in Scotland for talking about kids being too small. small uh -huh. Just work on how not to get involved in that battle. He doesn't assign anyone under six foot. <laughs> under 12 <laughs> my team's the weakest in the league fuck I've got the weakest he's team in the league he's starting five four his sons who are six four <laughs> <laughs> what is he in that time why did John no go to Celtic so he's, he's a Celtic fans going up why, why was his decision to stay with St Martin honestly like does he have a close two go on he, aye, aye it was, I mean it was close it was it was, it was brutal it was a tough I mean he doesn't like us talking about it now he doesn't like talking about it let's be honest Celtic if not missed them in terms of domestically they've been really successful John's career's went it's not as if it, it's been a disaster it didn't happen um, but it was like one of those like I was, you know, it was always a kind of chat it was almost like he was he was the one he'll play for Celtic like John will play for Celtic mm. it's a bit probably like a sympathy with the Shankland Lon Shankland and his family at the minute because they'll be probably suffering the same thing where everyone in the street everyone's like surely he must know surely he must know must what's know, happening yeah. what's happening <laughs> ultimately it's within so two clubs to agree a fee never really happened um, Steve Bruce as soon as he got the go ahead to, to bid for John like they, they did a takeover and he was down at Villa and it just happened like that Do you, to be honest did you want him to go to Celtic? aye everyone did I mean it just as it, he, he doesn't like talking about it he's bored of it Celtic fans are bored of it nobody wants to, to I know that. you like I know you were saying like he was obviously special when he was younger and then he broke through to someone and obviously done very well there but even you surprised at what he's done now and how much he has actually improved again, technically, physically, because he's just proper kicked on a, across the board, didn't he? I like, you always, I mean, always, I, I always said, I know it's probably a harsh thing to think, but I always said when he was young, I thought, if he doesn't play at the top, and I didn't know what the top looked like, the top for me was always like Celtic, it was like, Aye. if he doesn't play at the top, he'll, something will have gone wrong. Um, to Duke, to, to, I mean, to play at the level of football he is, and like, there's, there's moments in time, like the Arsenal won a few weeks ago when they scored the winner, like, played really well just yeah. you're just like sometimes you're like wow like this is unbelievable no and he scored probably the best volley you'll ever see in your life uh -huh, that's a great one. see I just want to see how you said like you knew John would go to like the top like, what was it about his game that you thought he had that you was never <laughs> talent no so <laughs> what was he like beat was he because nah, he wouldn't have been the type that beat five know, or six players he was really? like he, he, he was like so he, he was so talented right but he used to play with us when we were like when he was a wee guy he used to play with all my pals so like, six years between us um, and like we used to smash him and like from an early his legs like from an early age like he was strong as an ox mm. he played with a size 5 ball before I mean before he ever played with a size 4 he played with a size 5 he just like had he had everything you would look at a wee guy and think like as long as he kind of has a good attitude and sticks to it right. like he's got a chance of playing play no fear no fear of what he was up against at a young no age. and like see like I was in England by the time he made his debut I remember just I think it was one one of the games against Celtic at home against Wanyama. I remember just thinking like he just got he's just got no like respect for like he's playing. He's just like Do you know what I'm a good player. Like let's go. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, he's just. I think going. as well for me, you look at the Scotland national team and Andy Robertson's one of the best left backs in the Premier League modern era. You see what he's done assist. Scott McTominay's at Man U. You've got top players across the board. I think John McGinn's been Scotland's best, best player for the last two or three years. Absolutely, yeah. he's that one that um, makes a difference. The, 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 the game winning guy, I would say. Uh, he's got goals in his game. Uh, goals. Uh -huh. All right, we need to stop talking about his brother and actually talk. About <laughs> <laughs> it's always the worst, man. Uh, so you went to Watford. What a move that is, mate. Watford. I remember seeing that at the time, thinking that's a fucking. Yeah, that's how's, a move. how's that? 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 How's that?
2010. 2010. Aye. It was actually it was a game me and Kev scored in that they'd made up their mind. Kev Kyle? Mm hmm. Is that uh, Rugby Park? That's got a header. It was a cup game, we beat you 2-1. 2-1, that's and right. I equalised in 89th minute. He said he was poor. That's the fucking best header I've scored. Was it so, we, uh, we used to give, see at the time, we used to give John Potter, now at Rafe, a ter torrid time, right? Who Kev did? Aye, aye. every time. Used to batter him about the place, right? So we gave him it stinking. <laughs> we gave him it stinking at the time. Well, as in, you would give John Potter aye, a stinking saying, like, he's bullying your hair. Aye, like, the game with Kelly became up and like, oh no, Big Kev's coming, John, whatever. <laughs> so the chat gone quiet for years and years. Then on the oh, this show, uh, you called him Darren Potter. I, I called him fucking. <laughs> <laughs> So that just came right back up and Potsy got it stinking again. But I Watford at the time, I mean Watford um What was it, champ? They were like they were trying they'd gone through a period, they'd overspent, they were flirting with administration. It was championship, so they just got back to the guy John Stevenson, ex Celtic. I know John, John was at Celtic. Malky was the manager, wasn't Malky's it? the manager. Yeah, yeah. And they were buying project players like boys that the, other, the championship wouldn't look like, but had attributes that they, they felt they could work with, hungry boys that they could bring down. So, the guys like, like Danny Graham had come in for Carlisle, 300 grand. A uh, guy, Matt Williamson, they'd signed from Wickham, I think, for similar. Don Cowie for 100 grand or something for Ross mm -hmm. County. Will Buckley. So, it was just that type of signing they were making. And um, my agents at the time, they were saying, look, Watford are quite keen on you. I'd started the season, I scored at Easter Road, I'd scored two at Rugby Park. Um, I was playing really well. And uh, after after we played in that cup game, I scored. My agent phoned me and he said, "Look, um, what for that Saturday? I'll come back to watch you. Like we're going to do the deal." And that was like October or something. Oh, it would have been high. So it's quite a long. It was a league cup. Twenty must have been twenty or twenty one. I, I don't remember exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But it was like October, and I'm like, "What do you mean?" Like, and my dad's like, "You can't go there. Like they're going in administration." Um, whatever and I remember watching there was a game on that doesn't want you to go fucking anywhere does it <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to sit I'm not going to offer do you actually play with that fucking school team uh, the rest of the day and I remember like watching the game that Lloyd Doyle it was quite a famous goal Lloyd uh, Doyle, uh, scored, uh, it was on telly it was a Friday night championship game and I'm like dad that's my team I'm going to end that and he was like sceptical mm. no heard anything I'd been stinking for about a month see after he told me that's I the worst mean, though man uh, told us done deal. You I, started the I started the season I scored 4 or 5 goals didn't score on our goal for St Mern until I left um, I, I ended up having a decent last month before I left. I think we we won a couple of games. We were top six when I left, but um, I just that was it. It was it was down. What um, was there any other teams in, in there? I mean, I, I don't know I, your agent. I mean, the agent at the time told me Billy Davis was interesting. I think he was at Nottingham Forest. Forest. He, he's a like background in St Martin and He'd came to watch a couple of times, but nothing nothing concrete. Um, the Watford, as I said, the Watford one was like done quite early. Early does, and because it was the same agent as Don Cowie. They were like quite happy for it. Look, that's worked for Don. You're not going to go down there. Then all of a sudden, they're going to bring in someone for a million quid. Like yeah, they'll yeah, go yeah. down and they, they get a they chance. They need to make it work. So, so it's what done. was it like the first? What was it like going down? You drive down. Pays it to London, eh? Oh, mate. Honestly, like when I left, Shite yourself. I left St. Martin. So we were, like, in the semi final of the League Cup, it was end up in the the one we don't speak about at St. Martin where they lost to nine men. So we were in the top six with the semi final to look forward to. Like, I wasn't in like. I was at Carbon nearly every Tuesday. Do you know what I mean? I'm having buying more drinks. Live my mum, <laughs> mum. So I was enjoying my life in that. But then it's like a deal. Hear the wages, and you're like, for me. Do you know what I mean? A bit like that. So Was well, that like that, mate? Yeah. I, I, again, I'm obsessed with stuff like this. When you first heard that you're getting, I, I mean, you look, you're looking on. I'm looking on line at players like like Jay Demerit and stuff like that going to play at the World Cup, and I'm like, he can't be my teammate. Like Dan Potter. Jay was a Dan, Dan, boy, Dan Potter's he? supposed to be my teammate. <laughs> Jay Demerit. Do you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> Harry Potter to fucking Jay Demerit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Who did you drive down with? So my mum and dad came down um, So obviously they were both sceptical Like like where's the money come Like cause you're reading, they're reading up on it And administration And we need to meet them And I remember just going for dinner With, with Big Malky And he's like It looks great to have you on board Look me up and down He says But you're going to have to do some work in the gym Before you play my team so <laughs> <laughs> Did <laughs> he? <laughs> it was a few crackers Dice went and said to me said, uh, Who, Who's this who said to you? Sean Dice was assistant manager right. at the time he said, many appearances you had? Um, I said, I think about 90, maybe about 75 in the Premier League and 15 in the Cups and that. And he said, so if you play on Saturday, that'll be your first ever appearance since professional football. <laughs> 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 he just said, it's like English, that was his banter, as if like Scottish football. It does not exist, uh, but how good that John got John him back got with him the back shite coat. Yeah. John's yeah. fucking remembered yeah. that, isn't he? So is he going out in that dressing room? Uh, Troy Deeney was there, mate. No, he wasn't there. Was he? He joined, I joined in the January. He joined in the, the, the summer. So we're like, and I went down, our, our team was like 
Hyder Helgeson was there. What still, a player Hyder Helgeson was. Mate, what a fucking striker, striker. he Good was by the way. Strong as fuck. So they still had like some like overheads in terms of like I hate to call them that, but that for them it was like big money players like Nathan Ellington was there. Nathan Ellington, Good what a player as well, Ellington, uh, huh? Remember Wigan him, West uh, uh, him and the the two of them together, outstanding. John Harley, no, I mean John Left Harley, this back, back for yeah. Like one of my first nights, like Don Cowie's like, do you want to come around to John Harley's and play cards? And I'm like, go to John Harley's to play cards. I'm skin. <laughs> what was Harley's house like? Ah, lovely, aye. That's <laughs> nice, aye. You yeah. said Elton John used to join in training. <laughs> oh, that was the best man, didn't you? Did you ever go to Elton John's house? No. Did you ever meet him? No, I think he was there. Oh, was he fucked off by then? No, I'm. Um, no, I never came across him. But it was so we had loads of the older kind of players that John Eustace was there, Martin Taylor, big centre half. But then he had this like Martin had, Taylor, like, big Jordy boy. Aye. Uh, Fuck, he was a giant by the way. What a player, man. He How did you get along with Danny Graham? Obviously, he's been on. Yeah, he's a it. hero, Danny Graham. Ah, amazing. What a guy. Best. There was a there was a group like so. They all stayed in that one area, like Tom Cleverly, Danny Duncan. Was Cleverly there. Yeah, Clever, Clever was there. He was a player, field. mate. Nah. That's some squad they had, eh? Ah. She, she, Henry Lansbury and Clever were there with two. They were like England's next big kings. I they were the two at I the time. That. Henry was like, Henry in training, I was like, oh my god, that, that I can't play. He's unbelievable. Whereas Clever was more like, still a top player, but he was more like, work hard and yeah. get close to people and first in the warm up and first in the gym and like proper. Busy bastard. Top pro, I. He was like, um, he went on to Man United, but Henry was seriously talented. Like he was. He came for Arsenal, didn't he? As a kid, Henry Lansbury. I remember. So like, where it is that? We always usually had one field up uh, Arsenal because it's across the hedge, uh, Arsenal's training ground. So you were across the Arsenal. So, so we had the old train? training ground. Uh, no, the old like, Bothy, didn't it? Um, it's like Arsenal is the old Bothy. That's something it's called. London Colney, us. London Colney. Oh, right. Lansbury could nick a bird as well. He was <laughs> gorgeous, <laughs> mate. <laughs> is he still playing with Forrest? Nah, he does. A cut. I've seen him do a couple of media bits, mate, but he was a proper player. Does he know the guy that board. set up the grass company? Ah, uh -huh, that's uh -huh. him. Uh -huh. Multi-millionaire for the grass, uh, organic grass. Uh -huh. Have you yeah, gone on a night with him, mate? You're nicking it. You're getting his settings, nah. There was good nights out. There was a, there was a few Andy Vimans, Danny Drinkwater both came. They were unbelievable additions to a night out. Was that? Uh -huh. But uh, no, it was just it was like it was a good group in terms of I remember the first one of the first days and like the boy Mariapa and um, the captain at the time John Eustace like they did prehab at the time and everyone does prehab now but I didn't know what prehab I mean, came from some other I didn't know what it was like obviously on the Bosu balls and and they're like look see here we'll have a carry on like do what you want and the, he says but see once we get in here that's training started see if it's like three reps of eight do three reps of eight like we don't. We're not good enough, we're not Cardiff, we've not got J. Emmanuel Thomas and Bellamy up front, like we need to not cut corners, yeah. like for us to be, like we have to do everything right. So from that, like the, the culture of the place was unbelievable honestly, like by the time, by the time the takeover happened with the Potsos and the culture had changed quite a bit, but in that period, I mean. Who set that, was it Malky? Malky, was it Malky was big on it, honestly like see to have at the time, Malky ended up going to manage the Premier League, obviously Sean Dyche has been a uh, manager in the Premier League for, for a long time. Like, as a management duo, I know they were young at the time, but they were unbelievable. Did Malky finish playing with Watford then jump straight to that job? Remember I think he was assistant to Brendan. Because I'm thinking, I played against Malky when he played with Watford. I did. So he said he went assistant with So Brendan, he must have went straight from that to who, the... Who's scarier, Malky, Mackay or Sean Dyche? Sean Dyche got to be. Uh, Dyche is weird. He didn't really ever get involved in confrontation. Like, he was just so straight-laced, like, no excuses. Like, he would... I don't ever think I had him confident like uh -huh. seen him he just nipped everything at the bud like he was just like look see if you want to like leave like I'm not right. interested in it. He was, he was honestly unbelievable for discipline and just setting setting the culture and they just worked so well together what about Malky could he crack aye Malky could crack aye did uh, you ever get it like early on didn't they not in that he didn't crack in like a, I mean like a Gus McPherson where like an Nigel Clough down the line like they could crack. Like Malky was never, he was more, and we were a young group, so he probably was aware that he couldn't just go full red mist and, and lose everyone, because at the time we always had academy players in the team like yeah. playing, so. And how did you find the standards on him at you? I remember just the first few weeks just thinking, nah, this is too hard. This is like. Physically? Physically, it, the pace of, the pace right. of it. I remember even just like my first day, like standing like, you just keep doing that with the water bottle, standing next to Don Kiwi, because you're just like, I don't know what to do with myself. Uh, yeah. Do you know what I mean? But like, just watching him pass the ball a bit, I remember like Danny just, every pass along the like, just like a shot. It. And I think like, she saw these are, these are top players. And But honestly, they were such good pros, such good guys that 
I remember I just, where I sat in the bus, I used to sit next to John Eustace and Martin Taylor and just pepper them with questions the whole way. He ever, they must have hated me, but yeah. the whole way, just pepper them with questions about where they'd been. But like you used to do. Uh, that's a good way to get in with people, mate. Uh, I was the same as when they just <laughs> ask loads of questions that right. people take to you. How can you go for Malcolm McKay to Sean Dicey, John Franco Zola? How's that, how's that work for a director of football? What was, what was he like? Because he was completely different in terms of style, wasn't he, with that club is, team? I mean, so like the club, like, I, was, I was going to say, like, Dyson took over, so like Malky left and Dyson took over and a big thing was like, wanted to keep the same but changed it a wee bit. But the thing that was like, over, like I know you, you mentioned Troy Deeney, like Troy Deeney, up to that point, like, he yeah, had been a flop, like we bought him for, I think we'd paid like half a million from at Walsall and like, I, I'd spoke to you about the administration and yeah. we were all like, I think I was 125 grand or something, like, we were all... Is that how well, much you cost? Aye. 125 grand? Unbelievable. Fucking hell, that's alright, innit? So, uh, Troy was like, that was our first kind of big signing since we'd... Got kinda, to get back on your feet, And like, he was still like, we'd sign him for Walsall and he was still like, okay. one, he was kind of half football or half like, still with his pals and... Roadman. Aye. <laughs> and the, like, the amount of times, like, it'd be, we'd get him, we used to do a debrief on a Monday morning and we knew Troy hadn't turned up. Wait, and, he like, just wouldn't have turned up for the debrief? No. Like, Hero. quite often, quite Mondays, like, um so Malky would be in the bit of start and he'd be like, head count, Daishi. So Daishi would be like, I mean, we all knew Troy wasn't there. And he'd say, 21 gaffers, so he was 22 or whatever. And he'd say, uh, who's missing? And we'd all just be like, because it was like, I want a grass hammer, huh? He's like, Troy again. And then they would just go and phone. But he would admit, he'd admit himself, Troy, he, he didn't, he, he, he just played it well, so and he'd signed him and he, was, he wasn't fully invested in his football. So see when Daishi took over, Troy was dead to him, like, like I always say, like Troy Dean making it so big in football. I know people sometimes say about the jail, like he came out, like he came out of jail, like so lean and like fat and all that. But you, Dice, you, get the you should get the jail kid. <laughs> <laughs> I'd fucking love a six months. Then. I got a fucking better night's sleep. Three wins of mine. Sean Dice's hatred of him made Troy. Well, as in, I'll show you, like I because like. I remember the day, there was a day he was going to Coventry, I can't remember, who was the manager of Coventry, the, the bald guy, bigger guy, I can't remember. Bald guy, bigger guy. will come to me, anyway, you should know that. Is that your mate Page, you know? Page No, it was a big guy, I can't remember, so anyway. Chris Coleman? No, the day, so the day he was going to Coventry, like he was away. Dowie. Chris Coleman had the longest hair. <laughs> oh shit, <laughs> the big bald guy. <laughs> Absolute full fuck, man. So he was, he was away, but he was, wasn't part of the plans, like he was, he was gone. <laughs> uh, I can't remember that, but anyway, we went to France and it was like, everyone went. It wasn't like you could just leave him with a small squad and he just, he tried to break Troy. Troy spoken about it, I think, in a few podcasts, he right. tried to break him. And honestly, it was just like, the more Daishi hated him, the more Troy went, I'll show yeah, you. Man. And honestly, see the difference he made to our team. We, we were struggling. There was, a, there was a bit where Daishi was under pressure, he got sacked. And Troy went into the team and changed our season. Like him and Big Eye Willemo up front. We were, I mean, we were only pretty in the eye at yeah. times. He used to lash balls up to them, but... He was a monster, wasn't he, Danny? He just totally kicked on, uh -huh, I remember. Troy, Troy didn't also. at all. Not as big that strong. Big, no. Honestly, strong, honestly yeah. he was like a not big and strong. Uh, right. when, when did you? What, what year did you leave Watford? So the year I didn't kick a ball the whole season. Adam and he were about three months to go in Malky's last year. Then Malky went to Cardiff, and Daisha took over. I was out for thirteen months with my knee, so I didn't. I was. I mean, I was just Ross Wilson was there at the time. I end up getting quite close to Ross Wilson because you're not really. There's not that player staff relationship, so we used to go to games together and stuff like that, and go out for a bite to eat for dinner and stuff like that. And ended up getting quite close. What was to he him. doing the same job he done at Rangers there? Uh huh. Was he right? Uh huh. So I mean, he he phoned me. Was up. it him that signed you? No, no, no. So he John Stevenson left. I can't remember I where John Stevenson left. I remember Ross phoned me saying, "Look, I'm going in for that job because he he tried try to buy me for Falkirk. Right. Man, remember Falkirk tried to buy a few players. Yeah. So he phoned me up and he says, "Look, I'm going for an interview." And I said, look, go big on the academy, go big on the low, but low, like the budget signings, like just go big on it and I'll put a good word in for you, Malky. And Malky agreed to meet him and... So you've made Ross, Ross Wilson, mate? No, I mean, Ross is good, but he, I mean, he, he very quickly went from Falkirk and just right yeah. through the levels. One of my first starts for Middlesbrough was against Watford, away. Yeah. So I was wondering if you were there at the time, Troy Dini scored after, I think it was seven or eight seconds or something like that. I was there that day, yeah. We had, I think, I think it was the three nil it finished. And it was one of my first starts and I remember thinking, because Watford were, were doing well at this point, and we took kick-off, came to me at left mid, 
I've played it back to David Wheater at centre half, and David Wheater was supposed to swing it up the pitch, uh -huh. but he's turned because Troy Deeney's like proper full press and went to pass it back to go, he left it short, took it on him, 1 0. I think it was 2-0, 3-0 down at half-time, but I'm starting to went and oh, yeah, right. half I think time. that's the day, so she talk about uh, what a tough time Barry Robson used to give me in Scotland, like all the time, he used to beat me with Dundee United, he used to beat me with Celtic, whatever. That day, I think that's that day, I went and played a no-look pass, like he's came to press me or something, like, you're just feeling good about yourself, you play a pass round him or something, right? Uh -huh. He lost the plot. At you? Aye. Uh, what like, did he say? <laughs> Take the piss out of me now. He said, like, you've been a scuddy for years and all that. No way to glove on me for years. Now you're trying to give it the big end. It carried on. I mean, that carried on for the full game and down the tunnel. I remember Malky actually just picked me up and take me in the dressing room. Did you give him a bit back? I think a wee bit at the time, aye. Uh, but, like uh, just ginger bastard or something. I try to pretend I could, uh, <laughs> I was going to scalp him, but I, I, I just remember that day. He was like, he was quite funny because he had a proper bite. How come you left Watford? I just, uh, so like I hadn't kicked the ball and then all of a sudden the Potsos took over. So like Sean Dice, I mean I remember like Sean Dice, I'd made it into the last squad of the season. I was I remember being gutted, so I thought if you put me on the bench here and put me on for two minutes, that breaks up the sequence of like being out like for, for, for such so long, long, like yeah, just yeah. give me minutes and then when I come back in the summer, I've not, it's not my first start and yeah. whatever. But he was just like, look, I'm not risking you today, like I've got a summer go again, work hard, big player for me next year, but then the takeover happened, you're thinking, right, just keep Dice, just keep Dice, like, right. but it's Italian owners, they wanted rid of him, well, brought in signed about 30 Italian players, and, yeah. I, and I mean, people turned up, like, had obviously, they, they genuinely had been told the day before, they could going to Watford, right. the boys from Brazil, and the Brits are good, some, well, of them, some of them, honestly, like some of them, the wee guy, like, Matty Vidra, Albina, oh, uh, Vidra was good, mate. Abde, Forestieri, Boy Cassetti that scored in the Rome Derby, like boys like that started turning up and I was like, I'm in trouble here. But they had like they used to have like sixteen players in the stand, didn't they? <laughs> like they're so, the biggest squad in the history so, of football. So Zola, like people ask me about Zola all the time. Like, Zola's one of the best guys I've ever met in football. Like the nicest way? guys, like I mean we had like forty players. He would explain and we were nowhere near it. He would explain to us all individually that we were part of the squad and like sit down and like just a lovely guy, like We'd stay out and just like twat balls, but he'd like show us how to hit free kicks. Nah, there's a lot of video gonna, uh, floating about, and there's a video floating about with Zola showing the kids how to take a free kick properly, and then he steps up and absolutely top bits out it. My mate sent me that for uh, St. Mum. It's all right, stay in the rounds, aye. Because he, he, I've always told him that story about him with the free kick. Aye. So he could do that with his right and left foot. What, he can like, see, how you talk about, see how you talk about like, all these top players, like they weren't always perfect. He honestly, if you see with free kicks, it was like a, a robot. Why is it? I'm no joke, right and left foot. And he was kind of like, just do this, just do this, like exactly you that. Sure that, mate. Go and manage the team and stop fucking telling <laughs> see, when, uh, see, see Zola when we played Chelsea in the Prem. Sean Thornton was outstanding that day, and see after the game, Zola went to him and says, Can I get your strips on? No, he never. He fucking did. Swap strips with Sean Thornton. Zola was outstanding. Went around and well, Thornton, didn't he? Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> he hopeless after that, Thornton, wasn't he? Ah, he's in a senior to the dark. He had a fucking time. drink. <laughs> but the, I mean, he was amazing, right? The staff are horrendous. So, oh, is yeah. there any like mad? You obviously Aye, hear about Romanov's time at Hearts. Is there any somewhere with it? Horrendous. I, I wouldn't like to tell them all. How long have you seen them? One, here's one you can tell. So, the so we had so like all had issues starting team. So, bear in mind we just missed out. I think like mid table champ. It was a decent team. Boys, top players. I mean, like Martin Taylor, Eustace, yeah. all these guys. Like they, that was now the bomb squad. Like try to get rid of everyone. And like this is some manager used to take us for some of the worst sessions ever, right? But you're like, we'd, we, we were, we, it was a good group, right? You would take the piss a wee bit, but you would do it properly, right? One day they forgot about us. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like two o'clock, so like they'd, they'd, got oh, stage, sure. they'd got to a stage where they'd, so like Zola was trying to like train me like 40 people or whatever. Just doing free kicks, 40 working. is lined up. <laughs> so like, no, I like this. <laughs> So like the old like Duxbury and Nanny, they were called like the two guys, like they were like, No, you have to, we need rid of them. Like these guys like probably didn't even know. Like these guys probably didn't know us all individually, but we need them out, start making that life hard for them. So just be like a list, right? You're training at like two, half two or whatever. So like you stay in Martin Taylor, Troy to an extent, I know he was part of it, but they travel for Birmingham. I had to pick up kids in that, like uh -huh. travel. So they were just trying to annoy him, right? So we did this a couple of things, but this one day they forgot about us. So we were all out, two o'clock, and like, no sign. And like, Coach? No, and uh, to be fair to him, Eustie was the best captain ever. Like, I loved him. Like, just the Birmingham manager there. Yeah, yeah. He just barked straight into Zola, and like, went mental. He said it was embarrassing, like, nailed him, and 
within a few weeks everyone say like I'll go if you give me that or I'll go if you let me go there or whatever Pay all of a sudden that started to get sorted and I think not long after that I went to Shrewsbury and loan Did Sean Dice ever have a shower with the boys? Um, aye all the time aye What was he like naked? <laughs> Honestly, he's just he was like, Did he still have that goatee? He was so funny. Like, he used to run out some days, like just boots and slips on. <laughs> I like copas on and just like slips. Like he was just like, but he was so good that he could be the, the funny guy to like the manager and nothing would change. Uh, but, uh, did you ever play with Joe Garner? Nah, yeah, I did. Uh, he was at Rangers. When, when I mean, when they, we, we start the fallout with the Italians started to happen, he went and had this, the physio that was an absolute clown. He used to drive about in this golf buggy, right. so like, loads of pitches and that used to do. Joe Garner hid it from him, and there was like a absolute like... Inquest, who Inquest, I, a full-blown meeting, like the chief executive <laughs> of the club stole, and all that. Who stole the golf buggy? tell us who done it, <laughs> everyone's fine, and to be fair, nobody Where ever did he cracked. hide it? So like right down the lane, um, the training ground, like, I don't know if anyone's ever been to Watford, yeah. but it was it was in the bushes miles away. Should we go to David Weir and Chef Weir Again mate, there's another one, you're looking at it, it comes across Steve McGinn, you're like, how the fuck's he nicked that now? <laughs> Chef <laughs> United man! So I don't, I don't mate, Shrewsbury was good for me because I don't get Chef United from where I was at Wickham. Did uh, they well at Shrewsbury? Sorry. I'd done well and I went in and uh, because Chef United were in that league, ended up doing quite well and John Stevenson had moved there. Of course, he's made you, John Stevenson. Aye, shout out to John. Shout out to John. <laughs> Cake because of John. What, were you buzzing when you heard Sheffield United, were you? Aye, aye. Shrews see, to be fair, Shrewsbury offered me more money to stay Did that? than Sheffield United, aye. Um, I'd done well for them, we'd stayed up on the last day. Connor, Gold <laughs> Connor Goldson was there. At the time. So he was, that's right. We just broke into that team and he'd, like the last, we'd finished the season strong, he'd finally played all the young boys, we guy John Taylor and stuff like that, Joe Jacobs. Aye, John Taylor's a good player, mate. Was Josh and Heron on that team? Uh, not uh, not in that team, no. Do you know Ryan Woods? Ah, yeah. Uh -huh. he, he was in that did, we, did, I play, did I play against you that year? You would, aye. Uh -huh. we, he, yeah, he's battered at Swindon. That was when he was... That's right. That was four or something. Like that, that's right. right. What was Connor like? Oh, was Sheffield United in the first division then? We Sheffield United in my league, mate. Huh? Well, they, but he's talking really? about Shrewsbury. We beat Shrewsbury. Oh, that's Shrewsbury, aye. Right. That's good Connor to see. Was, uh, Connor was our best defender, but like the manager was like old school. Like He just wanted to play the older... Um, so when eventually got in the team, he was he made us better and um, amazing what he's went in to do with Brighton and Rangers. Mm. What well, did you think Goldson was top player even then? You don't. I didn't see. I didn't see like what he's become, but I knew he was going to be good. I knew he would. I knew he would kick on from Shrews Shrews yeah, Shrews I remember him at Shrewsbury actually. Huh? How how did you find Davy? I know he was only there for a couple of months, but you're talking about so Davy's one of the best guys Aye. I've met in football. Davy was a mate, Like he was a lovely guy. Um, probably still in that. He was a bit like a kind of senior players more than. The, like he probably could have been a bit harder at times on just standards, just boys. But he was, he was good. And like we started the season unbelievable, like playing really good football. Um, but like in my second game, like we beat Notts County first game. Like I'd, I think I'd set up the winner for Harry Maguire's header, and then we went down to Brentford, who had a good team. Brentford went one up, but he battered them for like 10, 15 minutes, and I put in the cross for Neil Collins to equalise. Mm -hmm. But. Uh, See how the Will Grigg song, see how like that was like, summer, yeah. that was like PTSD for me that song. Huh. So I've tried to shield the ball, it's at Brentford roasting hot day, right, mm -hmm. channel ball, we are flying like batter on Brentford, right, good side, right. I've tried to shield the ball out for a goal kick, and so that the boy George Savile. Uh -huh. yeah. So a good player George Savile. So like, I, know, I know near the end this isn't going to get a play, or no, like, oh, just sure before not. I'm going to twat it, he's like almost like, tough, scooped yeah. round, scooped round, I've fell over it, he's cut it back, Will Grigg scored the winner. Davy Weir's taking me off a minute later. Oh no. First I, half? I, he's, not nice, he's not that nice a fucking guy, no, is he? No, no. <laughs> but like... <laughs> Absolutely done you, man. Ruthless. He's made I'm you one of the guinea pigs, that's cute. Guinea pig. <laughs> 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 but like, I, I probably, my, my only, I mean, I, I made a mistake, it cost us a game, but like, if he was probably more experienced, he might me, uh, gave me 10 minutes to... Yeah, yeah, yeah just to put it under the radar. <laughs> Mate, how good you feel up my sense? Aye, oh, chef you. How did you get on with uh, Neil Collins? Aye, good, still, still close to oh, him aye, just now. Man. Aye, 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 man's aye, man's aye, that's right. Aye. Aye. Chef, you, Chef Wed Leeds, that was a free in, in, in the Nade Division. Love aye. playing at the stadium. Norwich man. were in that league for a bit as well, mate. Shit fans, so though. Shit thing. atmosphere. Well, Norwich, Norwich uh, Sheffield aye. Sheffield United. I thought it was alright. I loved playing at Sheffield United. That's what I mean. Like, Chef, you, Chef Wed Leeds, I thought with a free prop. Chef, you was right there one of my favourite away stadiums. Chef United? Aye, definitely, mate. Loved it. Was Kevin McDonald? used to play them Tuesday nights. What a player, what a hero, a guy as well. Funny. We lost, Davy. we lost him, so like, he played the first game, did he play the second game as well? He went to Wolves, 
and like that that probably killed him as well because he'd made him a number 10 like he was going to make him like you're the main man yeah he started unbelievable we lost him to wolves who were in that league and it was well. amazing for wolves and then nigel clough comes in this is where it gets good lads because nigel clough is a hero aye unreal how, how off it is he nigel clough i mean I, I don't think sometimes you tell stories but nigel clough like people believe you like you say stuff like like say like swindon like turned up one day it was like five past two still like, hadn't named the team or anything and like you know what it's like it's when them in the roundabouts and like we just got off the bus because it was traffic because obviously it's five past two all the football the fans what do you mean around. you got off the bus before the ground I and just walked like three quarters of a mile or half a mile to the ground like was it him through the saying? swindon fans I was like like he's just like doing the bottom nah i'm not having this not having us right everyone off pulled the we just pulled over to the side we used to do stuff like that all the time wow i was a kit man take the kit but oh, you no, do you honestly like you, read, you hear old stories about brian clough or whatever like and like you, you actually like well, he did that. Like that, that happened for us and stuff like that. Do you know did I mean? you just play cricket? Aye, raging. Love. I was terrible at cricket. Raging me if you were bad at cricket. <laughs> like raging. I, no, even joking. Like, so what? So what, how many days a week would you play cricket, or would it be like once a month or something? Like we did no tactics, nothing. Like no, no shape like, or nothing. As I said, team, we got to ground. Whenever we got to ground, it was never like quarter past one, half one. It was like quarter to yeah. two. Any time between quarter to two and quarter past two, ten past two. Aye, and. Garn's assistant manager, he was the first team coach, the assistant manager wasn't allowed to come to games. Why? Because he annoyed him during games. <laughs> 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 he used to go to the... He was the assistant! So say we were playing Swindon or whatever, like, he would go to that game on a Saturday. Like, be there all day, Monday to, fr Monday to Friday. What, he'd go and watch the opposition instead Aye. of coming to your game? Aye. Fuck off. Aye. That's mental, man. That's fucking nuts. So like, we went to Wembley, like, we played the FA Cup semi-final and I was on the bench and, like, he was just getting dead worked up at the side. And like the gaffers, like, that's why you don't come to games or something like that. It's like, like do you know what I mean? Because he just gets dead worked up. But uh, I mean, it was just they four bit of paper would go up in the wall, and like where I sat at Bramall Lane, like I sat on that side, so like the bit of paper would go up there. So like, you'd have to wait until the staff went out, or you'd say to like maybe like one of the teammates, like, am I playing? Am I on the bench or whatever? Like that's the way I named the team. All right, so you'd just stick that up. You wouldn't even say. Aye, I mean, you'd, you'd, you knew, I mean, I say with no tactics, you knew what he wanted. Like, you knew the rules. Like, you wanted to put the ball out of Murph and you knew the crosses you liked. You knew the. But you could guess the team in terms of, like, who he'd shouted at, who he hadn't shouted at. And Johnny Russell said he called somebody a League Two wanker. <laughs> After he gave them the championship, he signed them for League Two. He's like, that's what you're not a League Two wanker. He, he could make you feel, like, tiny. What like, was the worst thing he said to you? Do you remember? Uh, the whole probably the way I left Sheffield, Sheffield United was the worst whatever and it was like it was brutal uh, probably skipping out some of the some good stories uh, by going to the end but I remember like the first season finished so that we'd went to the FA Cup semi-final but we'd underperformed in the league like we missed out in the playoffs and that and it was I knew like a big club you don't get loads of chances to be successful and playing centre mid like I knew it so Chris Basham signed James Wallace signed I think they were trying to get Connor Cody back in loan so he'd done well like Michael Doyle like Josie Baxter so like I knew so I, I got myself really Josie fit Josie Baxter fucking hell what a player you, you get the sense like you're not I'm, like I'm on the cusp here uh -huh. I, I, I could be expendable here so get back really fit brilliant pre-season couldn't have went better for a personal level right so like see that way you, you didn't get any indication of the team or that you like, didn't get so like you're trying to maybe catch his attention so like didn't at all but just as a fluke on the Friday before the first game of the season, like I'm passing him on the stairs, like at this training ground, uh -huh. walk past him, never say that, just blank me, just walk past him. And then, oh, Steve, I call me Steve, tell your agent that um, you can find a new club, like you're done here, let him not play again. I thought he was potentially going to, I thought I was so starting. <laughs> like, James Wallace was injured, Chris Basham hadn't had Cody back, w uh, Wallace, uh, Basham hadn't had a good pre season. And it was just like, you're not going to be in the squad, you're not going to play again. Wow. So anyway, that's what it is. I mean, all of a sudden, um, just no part of it. Like, you're literally, not. some days I was training, some days I was training with the kids. But you're like, Chef United, well, hang in, I'll just, I won't get, I mean, I, I worked hard to get here from Shrewsbury. Like, uh, I'm not just giving it up, I'll give it a few months and... See if you get sacked. We had we'd a brilliant group there, we had loads of Scottish, like in... Flynn and all that was there. Flynn and Murph, like we used to do... Kits, uh, Paul Kits, yeah. No, he came into the place. Just after. Aye. So, um Actually, he loves Paul Coots, that's why he loves Paul Coots. So, uh, so, as I say, you hang in, trained, never moaned about anything. Like, see how, you, see how the bit you sent me, you ask about young players, who Calvert-Lewin, and 
that time some of these kids were like really young we were training with them on a Saturday morning me, Chris Porter Neil Collins training with them like some of them were, like we David Brooks it's ah, born, it's born and Ramsdale the goalie like they were all training and that was a jobby session no they, they were kids but they were kids like it was a good it was a really good group like boy well, like youth team like you just got sent to train with youth team aye so you didn't know sometimes training with youth team sometimes you'd be training with the first team so we tried to get ready right. and hung in hung in got to the league cup and he actually was part of the squad didn't know how I was starting so I'm like that's my chance but like that's fucking if you know where if you know where like you travel as I say you travel down same script your team's up it's McGinn, McGinn you're starting oh, no way so we won one nil. I think Michael Higdon scored for Simon Lappin cross. Oh, <laughs> like he changed the he changed the team to the fair, like it's absolute SPL classic, yeah, that. Yeah, that's right. like classic, that. Huh? Was it that was it that game? It was, I can't remember like, but anyway, it was late in the Orient, we won one nil and uh, I was the best player. See after the game, he's at see him. Outstanding tonight, honestly. He said he's been a lot's been thrown at him. Uh, couldn't ask any more, like I never complained and you were unbelievable out there. Like we won the game, big party was for you, right? So we went to Nando's on the Thursday, like we always used to go to Nando's, say it was like, it was four or five, it was like Jose Baxter and that, right? Uh -huh. but I don't need to leave, like I'm back, like, used to go out in that, uh -huh. Sheffield and that, like, a good squad. Uh -huh. So we got to the Saturday and like, I was in the squad on the, the Friday. A4 goes up and the manager was there when A4 went up and he was never there. And he's like, look, you know, I don't usually do this, but just wanted to say, like, Stephen, excellent the other night. Um, couldn't ask any more for you, but just couldn't find a place for you on the bench. I went for like oh, that went for and start, like, see that way like I'm just like right I'm not soft I'm no soft like right, that's me done like I'm out of here like oh, <laughs> that's a final straw oh, see people like, didn't realise how hard it is to be I a football know, player mate, and I how much it fucks with your head man I, that was see that was like I remember like just going home and like just being like I was broke Did, were, were you a drinker? uh huh Right, well I was going to say, because maybe that's why, because he was massive on squads, like sticking together and drinking, weren't he? Like, you used to have nights out and see everyone after, had to be there. See, after we won in the FA Cup quarter final, we went in a, like, cause when David left, I think we were like bottom five or something, bottom six in League One, but we went on this amazing run. I think we won nine games and drew one, including winning an F, FA Cup quarter final. And he took us to Marbella, but we'd heard from like, a couple of Derby boys, like John Brayford was there, and he said, look, the Marbella trips are amazing. Like, he's taking them to Miami, Derby and that, but we've not got international breaks, I don't know if we'll be able to squeeze them in. You don't take your boots, nothing, like, it's just the best couple of days ever. So night, next thing, itinerary comes in. So we played on the Wednesday night against someone, it's a Crawley or something at home. But then we played Preston away on Sky on the Monday night. But we were going to Marbella Thursday, Friday, Saturday, like back home on the Saturday, train Sunday, Game on Sky away to Preston, who were like... On the Monday? Monday night. And you still got to Marbella the days before that? So we went, so we played on the Wednesday night. We flew out for East Midlands or something at six o'clock on the Thursday morning. Got to the, had breakfast or whatever. We had to go down to like a, a pitch. And they said, right, let's just get pictures taken for the Twitter. <laughs> this was like in uh, <laughs> this was, <laughs> What a guy, man. This was, in, this was in trainers and that, like no balls. We didn't take any balls, we didn't take any boots, just... He told, I think we get told to bring like train of the kit man brought train Sorry. one set of training kit still stand as if we like just so doing pictures then back up pictures back up and then it was like right rules ah make the meals make your meals back here for dinner so you can go to beach club down all, all day all you want don't care what state you're in make dinner everybody makes dinner wow so uh then all day make dinner then just all night but this was I mean it was amazing we were in. I just remember one of the nights, I think it was maybe a Thursday night, and see that way, like, we we were going to play uh, Hall in the semi-final. See, like, everyone on top of the bar and that. Like, Garns come, the, the first team coaches came, like, Chris Morgan and that, they'd all came with us. Right. Gaffer, Gaffer didn't come out with us. And it was like, play cricket, cricket, sarah, sarah. Play cricket, he's ruined it. <laughs> like, the, the, we're going to Wembley, like, just in the bar, like, everyone's steaming. Like, it, was, it wasn't that busy, I think, uh -huh. the year we went. Two days, absolutely steaming. Got back on the Saturday. Trained on a Sunday, everyone's just like, you know what it's like, two days off, never mind, two uh -huh. days in Marbella. Like, what's the team going to be? So you didn't know that, like, ever. Remember on the bus to Preston, everyone's like, I hope we're not playing tonight. So I, I, I didn't play. Um, we drew 0 0. See, we had about 10 minutes to go, the benches class. And um, the gaffer had said to Simon Grayson, like their manager at the time, said, We've been on the pass for three nights. You still can't beat us. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait, I mean, think of like managers in the professional like they, if you were playing the Monday, what days you'd be in, what you'd be uh, doing that. It was just um, That's incredible. I, I'm sure Muff told me a story once 
I don't know, you can tell me if this is true or no, that he used to love a quiz night in a pub. It was like every Thursday or Aye. something like that. So and he used to take muff, see, because you pure love muff. Uh -huh. So he used to phone muff, like, I'm coming to pick you up, you're coming to this quiz night on a Thursday. No way. So this was, uh, so that was his thing at Derby, but he lived, like, because he lived, I think he lived in Derby or Burton or something, like, he lived out that way. So it was Sheffield's a bit of me, I, I came out for there. But I think it was when Murph went to Burton, like, he had to, him and the uh, Gaffer's family went to uh, the quiz and had well, dinner. Just, had, just Jamie dinner. Murphy and Nigel Cough sitting there in a quiz at a yeah. pub. You should take it like pub quizzes on a Thursday. <laughs> apparently, like, he was, he, uh, honestly, he was, so, he was scary, like, he was scary, but apparently he's, like, quite a, like, a nice guy. Quiet laid back guy. What's the worst thing you've ever heard him say, say to somebody, a player? There's a guy, Terry Kendi, I don't know if he, like, this young centre half, like, it was him and Harry Maguire, the partners, and you've, you end up winning the lottery no long ago. Did he? Did he? But he abused him, it owed him away for about 50, the full 50 minutes. Same like, just like. abused him, just, I uh, can't repeat most of it, but just, like, and there was no need, I think it was an end of season five, so something like, <laughs> well, he gave him a bit of his, he clearly had a bit of his dynamo. Uh-huh. Aye, like, Fucking he was wild, eh? He do stuff, there was one game, I think it may have been, I think it may have been Swindon or something like Murph was just unbelievable. And you hear the old stories, he took off John Robertson's boots and that. Aye, aye, he'd aye. get up and he would do stuff like that with Murph. What, he'd go and take Murph's boot, boots, boots off? Aye. Like abusing tennis and then go and take Murph's boots off for him. I love Murph, that, didn't Imagine that. He signed Murph for about three clubs. And you know how awkward Murph is as well, so Murph's kind of like standing there. <laughs> imagine you <laughs> started rubbing his head. Yeah. I would just start rubbing his head the way he'd have it. Did Murphy love him, obviously, huh? I loved him, but he, that's what I mean. He, he, was, he was the main man at Sheffield for that sort of period. So, him, so like, uh, we just had this, like, I mean, Harry Maguire was, see, we talk about, like, all the boys I spoke about, the, the young players. Harry Maguire was the best. And, and Harry Maguire gets such a hard, Harry Maguire's, Harry Maguire's unbelievable. Uh, is he? Unbelievable. I remember playing against you, he was good. I remember, see, so you speak about Ross Wilson. She's just a dribble, didn't he, all the time? I can't, remember, I can't remember what stage. Ross Wilson's at, Huddersfield in the championship and we were at uh, Sheffield United in League One. Might not have left anyway, but I remember saying you have to sign him if you get a chance. Like he can do everything. He's like, nah, I don't know. He's on the turn a bit uh, cumbersome. Like, and I was like, I promise you, he's not. He's the best. Like he's our best player in training every day. You can't tackle him. He's quicker than he looks. And honestly, all we used to do is he used to get the ball. Dyer get out to Murph. Murph would get his full back, cut it back, or uh, and score. Um, Murph but, was on fire, and that's right. Uh, uh, yeah, I did, he had three or four years. At, Sheffield United and Brighton, it was unbelievable. I could listen to Nigel Clough stuff all the time. Aye, same. Was Murph good at cricket? No. So what was he, was he a bowler or a batter, Clough? Eh, uh, both. Both. And it's funny, he used to, cricket, I mean cricket. And umpire, and wicked gear. He used to, you see every warm up, he used to be like, Garns was getting goals, Gary Crosby would like cross it in and he just hit volleys. Who, hey, Coffey? Aye, that would be the... But why you, what, what do you mean, why you So we like doing a warm up and they're like the passing draw with like thingy. <laughs> and he just did volleys up, up thing at a bit and that like some like volleys and that he was like, obviously like a good player <laughs> he was a good player nice. uh, 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 he played for Liverpool, Liverpool no. uh, he was a joke Fuck did they play for Liverpool? Uh, he played for Liverpool mate uh, was Calvert-Lewin good? young young but young, you know, right. I, he could do like he's jumping and that and he's, he's sprinting and that he's some player oh Clough man I wish I'd, I'd love to have played under somebody like that see if everyone right ever played street. with him just sat in a room you could get a book out at like bestseller uh -huh. obviously with the stories was it oh. Bywater somebody hit Bywater with a Bywater's his goalie for the game on a Saturday and it's a Thursday somebody hits Bywater's hand with the cricket ball and Bywater's like gaffer my hand's fucked <laughs> and you'd think he'd be raging that he was going to miss Saturday and he's like what do you mean? We need you you're the fucking umpire he's out and he's going to keep being the umpire man okay. Chris Commons tells a great story as well somebody's like Adam gaffer we need to work on set pieces I don't know if it was Chris Commons it was somebody we need to work on set pieces we keep conceding for set pieces he goes all right, let's go. Let's work on set pieces. He goes right. You come in the box. I'll mark you. He goes. Right, somebody go and take a corner. Somebody just goes. It whips the boy. He goes and he does it. He goes. There you go. That's how we do it. I fucking love that. Bro, for old school man. Amazing. By the way, for chef you, Harry Maguire, Calvert Lewin, <laughs> Dundee with Simon Ferry. Oh man, I was done at that point, man. When you came, I remember I was done at that. Point. I just remember. I mean, I probably, I, I regretted. No, the move, I regretted the way I went about that move, like I just, I was so, I probably the hangover looking back at the time for the way it ended at Sheffield United and I was gutted to leave and like, as I say, like go for some games, like one of the games against Fulham, like playing directly against Clint Dempsey and I'd played really well in that and I'm thinking, nah, I've still got a bit of life in me down in England, like I'm not dead here, like I don't yeah. need to go back, but obviously Paul was there, I mean the team on paper, we got top six, we were a good side, but yeah. 
everything about it, probably like, see like the car schools walking it, coming in a minute to ten, then as soon as they were allowed to go, everyone was away, yeah. it was like, we, we had a good team, but it should have been better. Oh mate, 100%, I agree, it was, it was a free throw, wasn't it? Who uh, were you thinking? You that oh mate, I, see what he said mate, I should up? never have left England. See, oh, no, coming I back up with Scottish same. boys, mate, I carry on. It was the worst thing I've ever. I, I was think when I I'd have been a minute to ten. I'd have been quarter past ten. I think, I think there's like loads back. of footballers would say coming back to Scotland. You come back because you think it's going to be easier. It's comfort. Uh -huh. And it's no mate. It's hard. And it's no, you're not at it. England, you just stay there as long as you possibly see, I came, can. I came back. I said I came back not prepared for it. Whereas later in my career, when I came back for Superman. I was just like, no, I'm, like I'm going to be. I'm serious. Not that I mean, I tried my hardest in that, but I just wasn't. I never. I never played that. Way. I came back to Scotland later. This is never do I lie. I came back because I thought it was going to be easy, mm. and my first game was against fucking Joe thing reporter. Damn. And I thought this is easy. <laughs> 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 I have to but it's like you, see, in England, mate, you've got a fitness coach. who's like you must be in the gym. At the time. You must be doing eight sets of free. Like see, see, in all fairness to Scotland, like that is what it is in Scotland. Uh -huh. It may be different. No, like, now, uh, now, now it is. No, no, no. Like we would have gym sessions, mate, and we just play head tennis for like four hours like, on a Friday <laughs> the day before I get. But like stuff like I mean, we had a like, Casco come for Hamilton, Casco for Glasgow, That's Casco. Right. Every every day, at least one of the cast girls would be like in stop in traffic or something. It would just right. be playing beat the heat. Um, I don't know. I don't think the Dundee club. I think the Dundee clubs have got more in Dundee now, which I think is important. Yeah, yeah. Who was your cast girl? Well, I moved to Perth because I, I thought See, you done it properly, and like you moved up closer to like, Dundee. I uh, wish I'd just moved back to like Glasgow and just came up with the boys because I didn't feel like that part yet. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, but you were you like you were much more professional than a lot of us, I would say, when you came up. We, we, I was trying to well, I don't know. I had not. Yeah, if you, I mean, if you were at Watford and Chef you and you're talking with John, just the way you were, you would be, wouldn't you? Nah, I mean, we, we used to be at ten o'clock. We were leaving Hamlet and Gary Irvin, who's the late every. I'm talking. You're looking at your watch at twenty past nine. And he's still not your your house. You, you done quite well for Dundee. I remember you played. You played every game when you came up. I I but I, I mean I mean I mean don't get me wrong. I mean Aberdeen, I think scored against Aberdeen. The Dundee derby was amazing. See the one under Heffernan scored. Uh, it was one of the it was one of the best nights of my career. Like we played really. really? Yeah. Aye, that was you and Tom on middle of the pitch, weren't it? Aye, and obviously Gowser, um, Jim McAllister. We played obviously quite a narrow uh, team. Yeah. Greg was playing Heffern and how much a hero is Paul Heffern? Our best guy ever. Isn't he? But it, aye, that was a pro that was probably a night where it all came together. Like with because we we got top six. Like I remember like. Was it Jeeps they scored against Thistle to get top six? Yeah. But then we get beaten every game in the top six. It was we uh, we did underperform to an extent with with some of the players we had. Uh -huh. And then you went back to Wickham. Akin Fenman was there as well. Who was the manager? It was a Gareth, Gareth Ainsworth. Ainsworth uh, Mate, Gareth Ainsworth was the hardest right winger I've ever played against in my life. Because he was, cause he was energetic. Aye, aye. I mean, no, but he was a fucking unit. Aye. Mate. He just used to hit diags up to him, mate, and he would just go and fucking smash the ball. Uh, he would do more, like, he would, him benching, like, because Big Bale sometimes would use Wickham as just, like, didn't train all the time. Akin Fenman was Bale. He would. What do you mean he would just. He would train it? Why not? So he did, like, power lifting and his big lifting, like, away from in his own gym. Right. Like with Wickham, he'd do like gym sessions. The, one of the biggest lifters was Gareth Ainsworth. With the manager? Wait, so hi. Um, was he good, Gareth Well, because I could, I could fame, was he alright? Aye, honestly, like, what a guy. Aye. Unbelievable. Because I listen to on that radio, I think I fucking pain in the arse, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> never nah, judge a, like, a voice by him. him in that, mate. Nah, he's like such a nice. He's ah, diff and he's different in terms of like, he's so. Um, like, I don't, I don't know how to explain it. He had the best clause in the contract ever. What was his clause? Um, used to work for the NFL. He worked for the NFL? Uh huh. So Same like, what? Just like, because he was the most, he was the strongest man in football. Right. Aye. Aye. But he just he used it to the connection with like American football and social media and they just, but every Super Bowl weekend he had the weekend off so he could go out and work at it. Did he? Aye. That's mad, done not it? That's unreal. So, uh, no, but he's, he's actually quite a good player. Uh -huh, I don't know. Like problem, film, we were a long ball team. I mean, it was man for man across the bar. It was a wrong move for me. Was, I shouldn't have done it. Um, as you say, it was just like coming out of Dundee. I was just like, I need to go back to England. I need to go back to England, but I, I didn't think it through. Rushed it through. I'd been in London before, um, so I thought I'll just stay there and um, travel to Wickham and that. But it just it, the football. I mean, before Big Bale came in, we had it long. When he came in, it was just fucking. Cool. See that way when t see that way every team pretends they pass the ball into midfield, like yeah, pass yeah. it out to centre half, then he twats it. <laughs> Once Bale signed, it was like. 
no man. Did Ainsworth no. ever do any kind of off the cuff? Like, because I seen him at QPR. I remember his first one of his first meetings. He brought a fucking mad tribal. Tribal guy in the put a spell in, on uh, the. Uh, that was. for me all that. He calls it development days. So we need to do something different, right? But um, I probably didn't buy into it. I thought a wee bit like that. Like, aye, this aye. doesn't make us good on a Saturday. Aye. Like that. You know, said why don't we make the development days that we fucking pass about each other? <laughs> one of the days. One of the days. See the final. See the semi final. Was it semi final? Rangers beat Celtic when Rogic missed the penalty. Aye, semi. So that day, our development day was watching the chairman. Chairman does like <laughs> like not Formula One, like the Diddy one, like in England, where like he, th he thought it was he thought it was like amazing. But watching him drive, and we haven't he watched him drive. <laughs> I'm like Celtic are playing Rangers on Sunday. Like, <laughs> so nah, I'm not having that. What like clap the chair? Hmm? Did you need to like when he when he finished like clap on? Uh, I don't know. Boys were like so obviously not like boys play the What's game. What's wrong with some people? So wait, you, had, you had to go to the grip, the like the racetrack where he was racing. Um, aye, aye, aye. And we're in his like with his family and friends like with his food and all that. And but like you know what it's like. Some boys like play the game like milk it and that down. Oh, look forward to this chairman in that right. I brought my laptop to watch the game. Aye, oh, yeah. <laughs> and I remember just like watching the game right. And I remember I can't remember why like obviously. Um, the game finishes. Big Benji Seagrass was there on loan, like now at Celtic. Yeah, back in Wizzy, right? And he's like, I'm getting off, I'm sick of this, like, just, I don't need this. I think he was on loan, but he wasn't playing or something. And I was like, Take me with you, will you? And did you just boost? So I just boost, I, the, 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 Some of the development days were like, like, but watch the chairman drive his motor. Building fires and all that, like, <laughs> oh, you fuck train, that, like, you know what I mean? So, but, uh, 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 surely, uh, surely nobody uh, bought into that. Yeah, everyone, there's always ones that buy into it, and there's always ones that Brown knows is a uh, this is brilliant. Aye. And then back to St Myrna after that. That was you. Championship at the time, Jack Ross. Do you, so you keep in contact with Jack Ross throughout your career? Not, not really. I, he'd been the coach for Paul at the Martin. That's right. Um, and Paul had kind of got closer and met him up when Paul was working in Glasgow. It's like one of those, like when you spoke to him again, it was like you'd spoke for, for years and years. But I remember just, I was. After Dundee and then I'd went down to Wickham, tried to stick out with Wickham for 18 months but it just got worse and worse and I was like, I'm in a bad place here, like, this isn't good. Uh. Who drove you back up the road? The chairman? <laughs> <laughs> I remember the rest of the team club. <laughs> I remember saying, hey, so I'd already agreed, agreed, uh, agreed with St Mum and I was just like, Gareth Wins was like, I think I might chuck it honestly, like just let me go, I need up to Scotland, let him know. He said, you, you must have something sorted just in case. If, nah, nah, I'm just sick of it, this is not for me, I need up the road. I signed for St Mern the next, next day. day. He, he, text, he texts well played. <laughs> Did he? <laughs> ah, good. Uh, but no, I, probably like my now wife, she was she was like, what are we doing this for? Like, oh, let's get back up. Like, we're, we're going to get married and kids and that. And I don't know, I thought, I just, with Jack as manager, I was like, do you know what? They're, <laughs> I think we're like 10 points behind the bot, uh, bottom of the league. It's in the championship. Is this when you were bottom of the championship? That's right. Aye. Cause I remember phoning Jack and he's like, D "Like you sure? Like you know where we are in the league? Like we're no, it's no great. I think we'd lost like so many games in our own." I was like, "No, do you know what? Like what made? Sorry, can I just ask what made you think of going to St. Man? Why not? Just, why did you not try and get another Scottish team? I, I don't know. I probably just the whole thing of like I knew if if we could keep them up, I knew the potential. But I loved it at St. Man. Right. It's like the closest one to my house." We were, we were talking. We were getting married. It was like buying a house. Like we'd rented all the time in England. We're going to buy a house. We're going to settle. Probably a wee bit for Ashley. Like we'll just look back. And um, I mean, say two or three. Say a mother will come on. Like I tried to sign me. W would it have been different in the Premier League? Like you never know. But I just had my mindset on right. I know Jack. Um, he trusts me. I trust him. If we can pull this off, like I'll enjoy it again and um, probably. The best decision I made in my career. And you well, got promotion under Jack Ross as well, didn't you? Yep. I so I mean when I first went in, the first day we played Falkirk at home, and like because you look and you think like Lewis Morgan's there, Stevie Mallon, uh, David Clarkson, like no Andy Webster, like there's I think Kyle Hutton. Like you look at the squad and you think uh, John Sutton, like that's punching. Like we only need to win X amount of games and we'll keep, we'll keep them up. Yeah. But the place was gone. Like I remember Stevie Mallon, like just <laughs> he was like stand finding. Until he eventually came off, I went on for him about fifty minutes. Like boys are just totally low Fine. confidence, and I it was. So what changed? Well, obviously we signed. He signed uh, myself, Rory Loy, Cami Smith, um, Boy Stelios, yep. Harry Davis, 
Um, Stay low, that the wee guy the bald head? No. That's the Coventry manager you're thinking of. <laughs> <laughs> Aye, big, Chris, Chris Coleman. Big tall guy, the wee guy. That was big Chris Delia, Coleman. <laughs> we got, we got. Was it the last day of the season you stayed at? Aye, so we drew at Hibs. That's right. So Aye. I remember, like, we shitting at these, we're going to go down to League One. Aye. But honestly, like, I don't know why, I just had a belief that we'd win the playoffs anyway. So, like, a wee bit of, like, great to get this done. And it was a major relief, like, it was a brilliant night out uh, after we'd done it. We probably should, Hibs, Hibs missed a big chance near the end, John put it in. John. John put an unbelievable ball in. So what happened what was, we? air, I think Rafe won, Rafe, but there was a cheer for our end, we thought, because if Rafe hadn't won, I think it was Rafe, we were safe anyway. So we had a cheer because we knew it was one each. We thought Air had obviously made it two one. So no matter in the game, like John thought, and we all oh, thought we're just, safe yeah, anyway. We're safe. And it was like that Air winning. So if he'd scored that, we'd have been in the playoffs. Wow. Uh, I think it was by Grant Holt or something missed it or, or Cummins. Um, but it was a it was a it was a special six months. And then like I just thought, see if we can keep these boys here and add a few. Like I remember telling Rory Lyle, like please stay. Like we're going to win this league. Um, he wanted to go back to full cup, but. Just the disbelief that we were on a roll. We just did so much momentum. Guys like Lewis Morgan, Kyle McGuinness, it was just like, uh, we were a really good team. Was Jack Ross good? I was great with me. I mean, the first week I was in, like, he made me captain, like, took it off Andy Webster. And to be fair with Andy Webster, he would then stayed on to be a coach, had a good relationship with him, but um, right away he made me captain and I thought it made me better. I became a better player. Any else yep. questions on St. Martin or are we moving on? It's Hibs in the Covid season and then it's Kelly. Hibs a great move. There's another one. Stephen McGinn's fucking signed for Hibs. So you just fallen John or was John falling? No, you? it was Jack Ross, wasn't it? No, Jack Ross got Hibs job. Yeah, but obviously John played with Hibs at Mum as well. Uh-huh. He was just falling. So, um, like, it was a Covid season, so some Mum let me go. I, I was a wee bit gutted, like, I thought I'd oh, let you go. Continue. You're not playing? Just that the manager, manager decided to let it? me go, um, Jim Goodwin. So, as, I mean, it's time to go. Um, I thought it was going to. Play out my career there and then go on to do what I'm doing now, doing a bit of coaching. And it was like, it was a Covid season, like there was only one league starting back up. And I'd had an operation, so I hadn't another one in my knee. So by the time Covid had started up, that was just me back fit. So I hadn't played, and I'm thinking, how am I going to get a, a club here? And Jack had off, because all the cutbacks, we all the squads, like Jack's like, I can't sign that many people. Like, look, I don't know what you're wanting to do, but see if you can kind of come in as a coach, but like as an extra number for me for like, just in case I need you, I know what you can do for me, players wise, if I ever need you. But mainly it'll be a coach. And I'm just like, I didn't want to do it, I still wanted to play, but I thought, what a brilliant opportunity and what is plan B? Like, didn't, nobody knew what was happening. Like, everyone out of contract must have been a horrible time. Yeah. Just to do the baby. So I was just like, do you know what? I'm going to do it. So it was, I mean, it was a coach. First and foremost, like, I played a couple of games. Did you get to coach? Uh, did a bit, I mean Jack's very hands on, yeah. um, had a big say in kind of decision making and seen the other side of it, which at times was, was, a, was an eye opener, but um, I, uh, it, was, it was weird because from then on, from, from Hibs, because when I went to Morton, Morton was basically, I'm either going to enjoy this year or I'm retiring, Gus McPherson signed me for Morton. Did he, right? He phoned me up and just said like, come and, come and play for me, eight games, keep us up. Um, and I said to Jack, I said, look Jack, I said, um, let me do it, please, like, I know we're, I think we had the Scottish Cup final later in the season, still had third to secure, but just like, please let me go, I need to know if I'm retiring that, like, time's up, mm-hmm. and I ended up going to Morton, we won the playoffs, really enjoyed it, and uh, got the move to Kilmarnock. That's a great move, what age were you when you said for Kelly? Uh, a couple of years ago now, 33. 33, yeah. Mm. That's mad as well, because you, you, I mean, you end up playing... Basically, I had a consistent run in that Kelly team, didn't you? I and played then forty again. I played forty games. Oh, that was the object because it was a wee bit like that. Like once you've once you're in that mindset, it's about like it's weird because who's the Kelly manager then? If Tommy Wright. Ah right, right. So it's like every season almost like your last. So like, I've kind of had that for the last few seasons. We are trying to soak up like everything yeah. to do it, and Kelly ended up being. I mean, the f- the the whole season at Kelly was amazing. I like, obviously didn't want Tommy Wright to lose his job. Um, probably underperformed for him, but. Um, what it went on to be and some of the laughs during it, like some. Who were good lads? Who was good lads at Kelly? Loads. Of, I mean, honestly, I would hate to name people and miss, be the biggest squad ever. No, I mean, we had yeah. loads. Of, so I'd hate to single boys out, but some big characters. I mean, getting to see Kyle Lafferty up in the flesh was uh, an eye opener. Any good Lafferty stories? Carrying on. He was just constant. Like honestly, like constant. Like, I remember, like you had to make sure Siri was off every day. 
Because he would just like, he'd be like, like Siri, phone Tommy Wright. I mean, am I? Sat like. <laughs> Like I remember Be- Beckland Glass came for- on loan for Dundee United <laughs> and I remember just like so he- they didn't know the rules like Siri's got to be off I remember he saying text Tam Corpse and he texted Tam Corpse with Declan Glass's phone saying Gaffer I've been done for drink driving <laughs> 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 so, De- so Decky Glass was uh, I can't remember Tam Corpse's assistant Decky Glass is out training with like, the boys that hadn't played and he's got like six missed calls oh. like for the assistant manager six for like the head of football or whatever Was it all Liam Fox's assistant manager? Uh, it was, it uh, was Liam Fox, Fox like just loads of missed calls and it was just, honestly, it was just constant like it was one day <laughs> he waited for Tony Dock to get out the shower but apparently, like, he, I don't know if it was a way dressing or something he hid in there, he said he hid for like two hours <laughs> waiting for him, he, like they must have had a meeting that day but he waited for Obviously, now Dundee manager to get out Come of the shower on. just so he could give him a fright. He was mental, man. <laughs> he videoed it. <laughs> that is brilliant, that. <laughs> but uh, I, I, McInnes coming in that season, like as I said, like we had, we probably, Tommy Wright probably too many options with too many players for each position. Yeah. And Dell came in, like, first thing, and first thing he did was he kind of settled in 11, didn't really go so well, then he settled in an, another 11, and that was it. But, he just, it was good, it, it was really good. He played our bro for last game, wasn't it? Remember that, watch that? So aye. Aye. Both, both of them, whoever won went up, wasn't it? That's right, our bro probably. Did they, did they, did they, they, they scored. I, 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 up. I, know what, aye. I was uh, I was just speaking to one of the old Kelly boys this morning, wee boy Callum Waters, about just like. Good player, left back. I said, because I wanted him to remind me what, because he's a good memory about the Tam Court story. Right. And he says, why didn't you tell me at the time? Dell made there was these two boys boy Ewan Devaney and Jack Sanders right so Jack Sanders big cocky lad came up for England same age as Ewan Devaney who's he's just same as something Devaney's went he was at Airdrie on Allo, the Allo, 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 that's right uh, cocky lad out the youth team right aye. so big Sandy thought he was a first team player like for, we used to used to get some laugh used to give him some pain right but a good lad honestly a good aye. lad meant well but just some of the things that came out his mouth so he used to speak to Devaney like he was a young boy but Devaney would be like, you're not a first team player, you're a Scuddy too, like, <laughs> uh-huh. they were like this every single day. So Derek McInnes says, look, there's only one way to solve this. Let's have a one-on-one out in the pitch. So he put two goals in, Zach Hemmings and big um, Sam Walker mm-hmm. in each net. If you think Devaney will win, go behind that goal. Probably. This goal he's shooting in. If you think Sanders will win, go in behind that goal. So we all go in, big squad, but loads behind, so the atmosphere's tense, right? Because mm-hmm. Sanders is a first team player, He's like left, I think it was Peanut, Paul Sheeran or a dog, I can't remember who's feeding in. I think we've got the video of it somewhere. They feed it in so that Sanders can smash Devaney. Yeah. Like he's got the, like it was first to two. Right. But Big Sanders like pulls out it, no knowing whether to smash him or not. Devaney's nipped in, nipped round him and whipped one like far corner. And you see all of us like we run in like celebrating, right. like goes one nil up. So anyway, you're thinking like Sanders can't lose this, like he goes on about being the first team player and that. Next one goes in, straight to Sanders again. Devaney takes the ball off him. And I swear scores a goal that he no, he doesn't he da- hadn't scored before. Yeah. Like takes him off him, just whips one bottom whip, bottom in, and you just see us. Just yeah. oh, this is the best ever, honestly. I wish I, love that. I don't know if I'd be allowed to class. share it, but that the video's worth watching. Uh-huh, that is so good. That's what Dale's good at. Like uh, 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 brilliant uh, stuff uh, like uh, that. Did you like Dale? Aye. Aye. I mean, the first thing he did for me was drop me. The last thing he did was release me. <laughs> but it was honestly like it was so good for me. As I said, he simplified the game for all of us. And just used to say to me, "Look, look, I never want you out the centre of the park. Like, I don't like my centre midfielders being at the centre of the park." And he just used to do wee things, whether he meant it or not. But he'd come and see me about two minutes before kick off, and he'd be like, "Look, you're the best midfielder in the park. Like you're me if I was playing. Like I just see me and you. You're you're a leader for me. You're the captain with it an armband." And I used to just say things like that to me. If you're annoyed. Probably didn't mean it, but I used to uh-huh. get your chest it and go and go and play. That's brilliant. Isn't it? So you're that full cup now. Is this you? Is, are you thinking about retiring or playing as long as you can? Well, as I say, I, I, I've thought about retiring last. Probably after the high of Kelly, like Kelly Abrof was that was special. The high of that. Uh, Probably the only time in the last few years I've not thought about retiring end of the season. Retiring a high with Falkirk getting promoted? Aye, it's what I mean, I'll consider it. Um, I've obviously been out a long time. But can't get in the team, so they've no lost a game in the league this season. Who's played centre mid? Yeah, Brad, Brad Spencer, Liam Henderson. Liam Henderson like scoring Henderson. goals for fun. Brad Spencer's very underrated. Is that Wraith, isn't he, Spencer? I Aye, like him really and Aidan Isbitt's having the season his career, so um, it's going well. But as I said, I'm doing the coaching with St Mernon. Wait, what age group are you tennis? Under 16s. Good age group. Uh-huh, enjoy it. Love it. We get a doing yesterday off Celtic, but so we get just, some. What was your score? Five one. Ah, did you try and sit in or did you go for it? No, no, no. We, I mean, we always, we always try and play. 
Um, but it was just one of those days. I mean, Quite, stand there. I've watched a lot of videos of St. Mungie Fun that get posted sometimes. Some of the football players incredible. All through the age group. I honestly like total football. Who does that come from? It's, it's just Alan McManus. It's fantastic. Alan McManus, um, Scott Galloway, Craig McLeish, like run the the program and this this kind of set rules. So loads of talented kids. Um, Chucked a wee bit yesterday, so we need to deal with that tonight. And what about giant manager? The future, would you like to do it? Always, it's, it's like when you're younger and that play champ man in that, you always want to do it. Uh, probably seeing what happened with Jack Ross in terms of some of the things you need to deal with makes you think twice about, I mean, are you ready for it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I get myself ready like. so I can see where I'm going when I get out of here. <laughs> see if it was going to be you, John and Paul, who would be manager, who'd be assistant, who'd be first team coach? Paul, assistant. And John, the first team coach, the Joker. All right, so Paul, you'd put John, who everyone would want to listen to, as the, the Joker, eh? Aye, aye. John, get in there and tell him about the time you played against Van Dyke. Van Dyke, uh, uh, Get his stories gone. What be best game you've seen John play, sorry? Been to live. Best game I've seen him play? <laughs> One man you could regret, like watching it. I was greeting when he scored the winner against uh, Derby in the playoffs. Oh, yeah? Banker was steaming. And I'd been steaming <laughs> for. We uh, we won the playoff final the day before. They won the penalties. Dundee United missed all the penalties. So who so beat it? Sorry. We beat Dundee United with St. Martin to no, stay up. Right. So me and Paul and that team went out that night, and then continuation into John scored the winner the next day at Wembley. So I think I was. Some weekend for the McGinn's. I, I, I think I was greeting, but I think it was just alcohol. So your mum and dad must have horsed each other that night. <laughs> back, back my mum <laughs> said, going down to Wembley, she's like, ah, like that's sick and relax now. No matter what happens today, if the worst thing happens to John is they don't get promoted, you aren't relegated. So, But then he goes and scores the winner, outdoes us once again. That's incredible. <laughs> Unreal. Steve, well, my well, 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 Good interview.